This week, we glove up for lovin' as we discuss the 1970 Jalo horror, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Hello and welcome to the Bloody Bits Horror Show. I am your host, Eddie, the Axe Jefferson, and joining me is always that pussy-eating painter. It's Tim Yobo. How are you doing today, good sir? I am doing very, very good. I just want to let everybody know that Shrimp Fury Killer is still my all-time favorite movie. <laughs> well, thanks for letting us all know, Tim. Um, I guess you have to thank Wick for that one, buddy. Wick is uh, the man. <laughs> He certainly is. And I'll tell you, Tim, we are not alone on our journey today, no, sir, because here we are once again joined by that bird ruining the recording. It's Candace. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> you know I had to do it, but it was right there. Candace, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing fantastic. And uh, I just got to say, um, Robbie, you got some explaining to do. Oh, Ooh. interesting, oh, interesting. See, and this thinks that last week's movie is the best movie she ever saw, too. So, That's, she, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> I'm up to the task. All right, Robbie. Well, I guess Candace kind of spoiled it, but our guest this week, we are joined by the uh, man with a PhD in yummy, yummy. Robbie, how are you doing today, good sir? I'm doing fantastic, just trying to stay cool. Like, like attitude wise or like temperature wise? Cool attitude wise. <laughs> that, no, no, no it, it, Come on. it's you know quite toasty here in the deep south, and uh, oh, it's been a hundred here. What's your temperature? Uh, it's one hundred and one. You know, just uh, oh, <laughs> no, I, I, it's it's about the same. So, so I listen to a podcast that's hosted by another person in the deep south, and he says that the secret. Is knowing the dew point. Mm, the humidity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is the temperature at which the air has to be cooled to become saturated with water vapor. I just Googled. Uh, so what's your dew point at? Or, or do you, is he wrong and not everybody in the South knows? Do you dew uh, point? I, <laughs> I don't dew point, but I have the misfortune of essentially living in a swamp. So it's always near 100% humidity. So gotcha. it, it is miserably hot and wet here. Oh, and man. you moved so, there on purpose? Uh, I was born here. So, uh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, no choice. Then. Okay. Yeah. Just never left. All yeah. right. So uh, keeping cool. That's You know what? That's a good idea for a segment, folks, because we are, we're under a blistering heat wave. It's gotten up to 78 degrees here in Southern California. So I feel your pain, Candace. What's everybody doing to, to keep cool? I'll tell you what I'm doing first, so I can give you guys some, some time to think rather than having to improvise. I am wearing a really old, shitty uh, basketball shorts, mm. uh, a, a tank top, and I've got the uh, window open with the fan on. That, that And I've been uh, drink-eating boozy popsicles. Uh, this one that I've got here is a lime margarita one that is made with... Uh, agave wine and it says it contains zero percent juice so that's probably is not it boozy great. or bougie that's, agave wine. that is it is not <laughs> bougie believe me i got it at a fucking sam's it, club it's almost tequila but not quite yeah <laughs> it's non-distilled tequila basically so uh tim buddy what are you doing to beat the heat and, and how is it up in your neck of the woods uh actually this weekend has been pretty nice yesterday i was out and about and it was like 67 degrees, and the fucking wind was blowing a nice little clip. So mm. we haven't had it too, too bad here in New York yet, but it's only a matter of time before your balls are sticking to your leg as you walk down the street. Ugh, it's the fucking worst. Candace, what do you do when it's uh, nice and hot and your balls are sticking to your leg? Well, uh, when I have a labia sticking to my leg, 
Oh, I God. Like no, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, how, how is it? He doesn't in your just flap of gums. <laughs> Jesus, Tim. Now, so you mentioned it was 101 down there, Candace? It's 100. It's literally 100 oh, degrees. Oh, God. But it's more of a dry heat because it hasn't rained in like three weeks. Okay, okay. So, so not as. It's a little, fire season. You go outside and it feels like your skin sizzling like, you know, chicken skin on a skillet. Yeah. It's it's not pleasant. So what I do is I stay inside in the air conditioning. <laughs> if I must go perfect. outside, I wear dresses. That's the perfect, perfect clothes to wear. Because yep. you, you can get all the, like the breeze, because it's always windy in the Midwest. The wind never fucking stops. So you got like a good breeze going in between your thighs and stuff, and you can ventilate. It's good. I don't know why people don't wear dresses all the time, because they're fucking comfortable, and uh, they make sense. Yeah, that was my wife's move for the longest time, to wear dresses around. Uh, yeah. Robbie, what about you, good sir? You, you've mentioned that it's nice and humid. What, what are you doing to beat the heat? You got any sort of a, a drink that you're leaning on, or uh, you're wearing dresses? Well, here in Dagobah, which is essentially where I'm at... <laughs> Um, I have discovered the, the, the wonderfulness that is linen and so like wearing thin linen oh, pants. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're, oh, you've turned into one of the, you're like, I have a seer sucker. <laughs> is that what you got? <laughs> you turned into a lawyer. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, no, not seer sucker. This is, I'm actually wearing linen, which is, it's, th- it's like wearing pajamas all the time. It's fantastic. Oh my God. I am so jealous. That is the move right there, buddy. Just linen. If, if it if it rains or something, people can just see your dick. Yeah, okay. yeah just great. perfect. <laughs> Man, nice Eddie, when you were when you were talking about using like those uh, boozy popsicles mm-hmm. to like cool down and stuff, like, th- th- is it just me or do you get like really fucking hot and sweaty when you start drinking? Like when you're getting buzzed and stuff. Like I get yeah. really sweaty and hot. I, ha- I have a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I always thought that drinking that. made you hotter than cooler, right? Yeah. I mean, so, you drink to make yourself yeah. warm. But. Hmm. Which that doesn't that. really work anyway, but it just feels like it for a second. Drinking solves most of life's problems. That's true. The problem, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. Yeah. Because it, it, from my understanding, is it opens up the blood vessels and, yeah. and makes it expands the blood them, makes you feel like flow. you're warmer, but you're actually going to die of hypothermia. <laughs> yep, yep. So those dogs with the barrels are trying to kill you. Those little fuckers. Plus, it dehydrates you. Every time I see yeah. those dumb fuckers at like concerts and stuff, when it's an outdoor vendor or venue, and you know they're like it's a hundred degrees outside, and they're just getting shit faced. And then, you know, they're passing out and throwing up on themselves. I'm like, you mm-hmm. stupid fuckers. Why are you doing that? You're getting dehydrated. You're going to fucking die. And you're miserable. You're not having a good time. First concert. Yeah. Well, these people look like they're 50. <laughs> so. oh, wow. <laughs> First concert in 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> I can still do that shit. Or they've given up. So <laughs> that could be it, too. All righty. So, uh. You know, I guess we could do the the what have you been consuming? I mean, we just did the weather report, so why not just chew up some more time? Um, sure. Robbie, I know you. if you're not familiar with the show, what we like to do at the beginning is we each kind of go over what we've been consuming throughout the week. I'll go very quickly. I played a little bit of Final Fantasy XIV. I have a really sexy bunny girl, Ugh, and gross. I'm loving the game. What? That was what? that was one of those times. Okay, so the Viera, the bunny girls, were in Final Fantasy XII, and mm-hmm. I had what? the like art book for Final Fantasy XII, and it would give some of the lore on the characters. Uh-oh. So the Viera are you know the bunny women, and they have mm-hmm. to wear high heels because their feet cannot they can't <laughs> walk if they're barefoot. So they, they have Hefner. so they have a genetic reason to be kinky. <laughs> like, yeah. they have to wear stiletto heels or they can't walk. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's for medical reasons. Ever since then, I think of Vieira and I'm like, God, that's so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I hate yeah. those things so much. No, they rule. So, of course, I had to make that character. Uh, so, Candace, what have you been consuming? Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. It's a great game. Oh, I don't know really? if you ever heard of it. So, how's your bunny girl doing? Uh, I have a uh, Lollafil. And like I said before, she's very small and cute and adorable. And I was talking to an NPC and when some other random player came up, did something and ran away. And when I looked at the left side of the screen in the chat bar, it says, 
so and so bent down and patted your head. I was like the <laughs> fucking disrespect. <laughs> the closest you can get to teabagging in that game, I guess. <laughs> I guess someone was like, oh my god, she's so small and cute, and then just patted me on the head, and then just went yeah, on with Yeah, that's the day. reason, Candace. Yeah. Candace, yeah. you can't even escape it in the fantasy world. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, what about you, Tim? What have, what have you been consuming, my friend? Uh, well, I don't know if everybody here heard this movie. The Indian movie that's out, the 3R movie, RRR, which I, each one stands for Revolt, Revenge, something like that. No. Okay. It is maybe one of the greatest action movies I've ever seen. It's three hours and ten minutes, and it, oh so far God. there's at least two dance scenes in it that me, as somebody who hates musical and dancing, fucking love it. Tim, why do you hate musicals and dancing? They're stupid. I, it, yeah, oh, you're right, God. Candace. It's just very, very difficult. It has to be done perfectly. It's just very difficult for me to get past, and I watch horror movies, science fiction movies, whatever. But for me to just suspend my disbelief that people in New York are just going to stop what they're doing and just start dancing in the streets. And everybody knows the same dance, though, the right dance. So, uh, that's, that's me, man. So, make, so, make them all dance different. And maybe I can put up with it more. So West Side Story, yes. not your favorite movie of nope, all time. No, no, no. But <laughs> when I was a kid, I loved Grease. And Hair is probably the only good musical last night that I've ever seen. The music so, Tim, has to be really fucking good to make me like a musical. I Tim, mean, your really issue is that good. it's not realistic that people would be dancing? Not in sync. Not all of them knowing it. Maybe, you know, what are they going to do? What are they, that fucking improv group that fucking stands still in Grand Central? Then, yeah. But I can't Tim, believe that everybody in New York, any everybody in any musical just all knows the song and knows the dance moves. Tim, can I ask you a question? Did you get pissed off at Forrest Gump because you're like, it's not realistic that he would be walking uh, or jogging across America? Uh, no, but I remember not really liking that movie too much when it came out. Okay, well, that's it was fine. like It's an okay movie, but hate Jenny. Well, that's, yeah, she's again, very problematic. Again, I like the principal. He was a good guy. Uh, so, <laughs> Robbie, my friend, what about you? What, what have you been consuming uh, this this week? Well, um, I've gone back and I've been rereading uh, Dune, Children of Dune and Dune Messiah. My my son discovered the Dune series and he wants to talk about it. So I'm having to go back and reread these things uh, okay. so that I can talk with him about it. And so uh, what I've, I've gone back and reading it and realized how boring it is. Uh, so <laughs> that's, <laughs> so that's I what so. I've been consuming lately. I want to reach that point where you can actually like be friends with your kids. And like talk about common interests and stuff. That'd yeah. be so much fun. It's it's really cool. I'm hoping that he'll. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of things that I want him to read and enjoy. And so that if this is what gets him into it, that's fine. You know, I'll, I'll read Candace, along. You and, should buy some She Hulk comics. Shut up. <laughs> <catch> up <laughs> Don't you shame right. my child. <laughs> so I'm posting my bunny girl in the Discord for you guys, oh, so you God. can take a look at her. Uh, do we have to? Yeah, yeah, Tim. She's great. Okay. So while you guys are looking at my bunny girl, I feel like I should probably let everybody know that this episode of the Bloody Bits Horror Show has been brought to you by Manscaped. Oh my God, Eddie. Now, if you have what? Your bunny girl Manscapes, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Nothing going on there. So uh, if you have hair on your testicles and you don't want to have hair on your testicles anymore... They're here to uh, offer you a hand up in shaving your balls so that you don't have hair on them anymore. Now, they have this thing that they call the Lawnmower 4.0 that's got a big light on it that doesn't strobe. It's uh, just a regular cool LED light that helps you to see in the dark. You can use that to shave your testicles tactically. You could do it like Sam Fisher from Splinter Cell hanging upside down. It's a good down. way to beat the heat, right? Less hair on your balls, less hair down there, less sweat. That's right. Beat your heat, then beat your meat, Tim. That's the motto. You can uh, shave all that up, and then you use the exfoliator so that you can get all of the, the scabs and stuff off of your dick and your balls uh, in case you got any important shows coming up that you got to look good for. Uh, and, hell, you just smell a lot better, too, because it's getting hot out there, and it's you're going to stink. It's hot uh, as balls. <laughs> Robbie, you said you live in a swamp. That doesn't mean you got to smell like it. Fair enough. 
Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, and uh, not only that, but uh, it's Father's Day today. Happy fa- every father has balls uh, that that yep. they fucked someone with the, and got them pregnant. So then they made they, that. Then they're a father. So uh, yeah, get your dad something for his balls to to shave them. What if I Why celebrate not? Father's Day with my daddy? That's disgusting. Yeah. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> uh, but you could say, you, no, no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> you could celebrate yourself. <laughs> Father's Day with your daddy by going to Manscaped and buying him uh, the deodorant for his, his penis. And you just have to go to manscaped.com and enter promo code BITS20. That's B like buy, I like it, T like today. S like sucka, like Mr. T would say to you, followed by the number 20. Bits 20 at manscaped.com. You get 20% off and free shipping anywhere in the world. Uh, and that means you listening to the podcast. No matter where you're at right now, unless you're in prison, I don't think they ship to prison. Also, how are you listening to this in prison? That's oh, weird. Oh, there's ways. <laughs> oh, Tim, you sound oh, like you're tell. experienced, buddy. Yeah. Uh, no, you've never seen TV shows or anything like that. You can have a radio in jail. Oh, uh, Tim, I keep. I have to remind you, we don't broadcast on the FM uh, radios. This is a podcast. <laughs> oh shit, that's right. I've been trying to find it on the FM dial for like the last year and a half. <laughs> yeah, we're not on the FM dial, Tim. So yeah, uh, Manscaped dot com promo code bits twenty. Hell to the yeah! So here we are. We're doing some more Giallo. And before we get to the movie, though, Candace, mm-hmm. you said something last episode that stuck with me. Oh, God. Okay. Here we go. oh. I know what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> Tim, you do? I just have a feeling I know what you're going to say. Something what is about it? a poll on the, the Twitter? Mm-hmm. No, 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 oh, no. Okay. Candace taking an L isn't, isn't news. Uh, no. So you mentioned last week... That whenever you start getting all steamy, I, I play that song and it, to, to shut you down, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And that, that you felt that there was a double standard. Yes. That was going on here. Yeah, and because you're you know shaming what? me for finding people attractive, but Tim and Wick can mm-hmm. just jizz all over themselves during the entire episode. That's correct. And I tried to play a, a rap song from a famous rapist last week. Um, Yeezy, <laughs> and uh, that Tim didn't it, it didn't slow him down whatsoever. So, I took it upon myself to to try and find something that might slow Tim down. Now the problem is we don't have a worked up Tim right now. Yeah, well, so, I could, you could stop this. I can go watch uh, Strip Nude for Your Killer. Tim, go okay. look at my bunny girl in the Discord real quick. I did, and it. it, it didn't have the effect I think you were hoping for. Okay. <laughs> Tim, what about just, the red-haired girl from Friday the 13th, the TV series? That's true. Yes, okay. <laughs> Tim, if she was a bunny girl. Hmm. She had you... to wear stilettos. Like, she was genetically <laughs> capable of not wearing, yeah. Yeah, not wearing stilettos. She takes them okay. off, she dies. That's right. That's right, Tim. And you know what? She just inherited um, a curio store. And you're the cashier working at the curio store, maybe? And maybe she's That's a little job. curious. Yeah, she's a little <laughs> yobo curious. <laughs> so, you know, you start thinking about that kind of stuff. And then, uh, Tim, I got one of these for you. Horrors in this house. There's some horrors in this house. There's some horrors in this house. There's some horrors. So you're thinking about horrors, I said, right? Certified freak. Seven days a week. Wet ass P word. Make that pullout game weak. Yeah, 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 yeah. You I think this is going to work ass on P-word. everybody, not just me a- or any guy. Did that work for you? It's little Ben Shapiro. It's little Benny Shapiro singing. Did he just sit on a pussy. stool to get up to the microphone to rap? See, but it shut you down, didn't it? Yeah, it made me angry, so now I got an angry, angry erection. Which an is angry bad. boner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm working on it. It's not I'm a just piss boner. Know. It's a pissed boner. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm just letting you guys know the technology is not perfect yet, but we're getting there. Yeah. We're going to be able to okay. shut down. I'm glad Tim's that you're taking this day. effort in the spirit of equality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Equality. It's not because I like fucking with people. It's equality. Yeah. 
So, Robbie, we are now smack dab toward the end. We can see the goal line of Giallo Month. And I invited you to join us. You haven't been with the show uh, in a little while. I've been sure kind enough. of waiting. I've been been kind of hoping to find a uh, a place where you'd fit in more naturally and, and uh, be kind of feel yourself a bit more with your selection of movies. So, of course, I went with Giallo Month, the, uh, sure. <laughs> the horniest month of all. It makes so perfect far. sense. <laughs> Uh, so your choice, well, you know, we, we teased it, but we didn't say it. Uh, Robbie, what was your choice for this week? The bird with the crystal plumage. Bird with the crystal plumage by one Dario Argento. Oh, uh, this is why famous, I didn't like it. <laughs> famous for Suspiria in the <sighs> cheeses that you get at the supermarket. Now, Robbie, why was this your choice? Uh, there are a couple reasons why I picked this one. There, when I think of Giallo, there are two movies that really come to mind for me. There's this one, and there's Bay of Blood. And so it, okay. it came came down to choosing between those two. And I picked this one um, mostly because this was – it's credited as being the movie that's responsible for sort of popularizing Giallo in America. Uh, or, mm-hmm. the, the, or the genre. And so I thought that, and it's Dario Argento. So again, there's a lot of, um, a lot to be unpacked there. And uh, I don't know that, and that, and the fact that I have a copy of it. So it was easy. Perfect. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. What's your history with this movie? Um, when I, so I'm a, a big fan of slasher movies and, uh, I tend to be the sort of guy who, if I like something, I kind of, uh, love it to death and suck all the fun out of it and have to know everything about it. So moving from slasher movies, it's like, oh, they're seem to, you know, they they were inspired by these Italian giallo movies. So then I have to go learn about giallo movies. And this was one of those that was, you know, like I said, was credited with popularizing the genre. And so it was probably the first giallo movie that I encountered. Excellent. So, Tim, mm-hmm. what is your history? Zero. Zero history. Never seen uh, it before. I told you before. I'm the, I was never a big fan of the uh, the Italian movies, the horror movies, and the Giallo movies also. And then if I came across this title while I'm flipping through uh, whatever illegal app I might be using to watch movies, mm-hmm. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I just keep going. So, Candace. The names of the movies don't help their cause. Gotcha. Understood. Understood. And it's kind of a throwaway. Except for a strip nude for your killer, which, I mean, it just tells you everything right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one wears it, it uh, uh, like a, on its sleeve what that movie's all about. So, Candace, what, what about you? What's your history with this movie? This is one of those movies that I saw on that list of greatest giallo. You know, if you want to acquaint yourself with the genre of giallo, this is what you should watch. So, you know, I've seen a lot of Argento. And realize that I don't like Argento. Ooh. I do not like him at all. And I did not know that he made this movie. I know this name was on the list because it's a very distinctive name, so I remembered it. And by that point, I decided I don't like Giallo, so I never watched it. Didn't realize he directed this, so I went in this movie blind because I didn't want to bias myself, you know? Like, mm-hmm. uh, I went into New York Ripper blind, and I loved mm-hmm. it. You know, I was so pleasantly surprised. I yeah. watched this, and by the end of it, I'm like, come the fuck on, when is this movie going to end? <laughs> God, I hate this movie so much. I have written oh. down, how many times can you just cancel a fucking airplane ticket from Italy to America? Apparently, as many times as you want. But yeah, oh, this uh, that makes a lot of sense that it yeah. was directed by, I think me and him, we just don't vibe. We do not vibe at all. Not your thing, huh, Candace? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, yeah, we, uh, I was on such a good roll, and I was like, oh, maybe I'm really discovering something about myself in Giallo movies. You know, maybe I should give them another shot. And then I watched this, and I was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, See, you like strip nude for your killer, too, Ken. I yeah. just like bad Giallo. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because the as far like a month of doing Italian horror, and, and with the idea, firstly, that the framework would have been Giallo. Yeah, you start with the beyond, not Giallo. Then you go to New York Ripper and strip nude for your killer, which are just the sleaziest of sleazy giallo movies. And they're the best. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, then to to hit something 
what did you say? You called this highfalutin. I, I think, called it. Uh, it's 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 prestige giallo. Prestige, this is, prestige. Yeah, this is so, the ones that people who get off on seventies Italian decor watch when they jack off to it. This is that that little subgenre. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm hurt. My, <laughs> yeah. Are you hurt because of how many times you jacked off to it? <laughs> yeah, that was way too accurate. It was like... <laughs> so this is my first viewing of this one. Like I said before, I, I have a huge blind spot for Italian horror. Uh, yeah, and I, I'll you know what? I will reserve my judgment as I usually do until the end because I'm a professional. God damn it. So, Candace, you're going to be pleased to know that not only was this directed by the legend of Jallo, Dario Argento, it was also adapted for screen by him. It was written, quote unquote, by Argento. Uh, best known in horror circles, of course, for Suspiria, Tenabra, Demons, Demons 2. Uh, this is, like you said, it kind of is what launched his, his career in the United States as being a name, uh, and it launched Jallo as a genre in the United States. Uh, and he is a bloody buddy, technically. While we've never covered one of Argento's movies before, he was a script consultant and worked on the soundtrack of Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, him and uh, Romero worked a lot together. They, they made two evil eyes together. Mm -hmm. Liquid pies yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So this movie is an unofficial adaptation of the 1949 pulp mystery novel, The Screaming Mimi, which was almost what I uh, gave you for the nickname in this episode, but then the <laughs> bird ruining the recording just was funnier to me. <laughs> uh, Holy shit, I remember reading that book. It was written by Frederick Brown. It was also adapted in 1958 under the original title, The Screaming Mimi, as an American film noir. So this is it makes sense a that this remake? is adapted adapted from a book because it actually has the most comprehensive plot of any Argento movie I have mm -hmm. ever seen. Okay. okay, it almost makes sense. Yeah, it mm -hmm. almost makes sense. So, yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm actually following a thread here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So while it's not the first Jalo, it, it is considered to have launched the genre in America. Uh, fun fact for our listeners. Every murder scene, you see the killer is beloved in this. And the reason for this was because Argento wanted to perform them himself. And uh, because he felt like he had a better understanding of the mechanics of the scene and how he wanted the, the murders to, to be coordinated, thus cementing the trope in Jallo history. <laughs> well, plus I think, <laughs> he, he, uh, I think he just likes to do things himself, like, you know, record his daughter during a nude sex yeah. scene. That's not awkward at all. I'm sorry, I just hate Argento. We can okay. tell Candace, jeez. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? Let's let's circle back on that one. Candace, your comment. Robbie has some explaining to do. Yeah. Let's let's go back to that little little nugget. Why? Because everyone else gave us uh, you know, sleazy that we really enjoyed. And then Robbie has to ruin it with his <laughs> taste. <laughs> with I don't his, know if anyone's ever said that before. He had to ruin it with his art. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's, I, I get it. You were, you were so happy with all the fried spam and eggs you've been eating. that Somebody brought you a steak and you're pissed. I get it. I, get I was it. gorging myself on junk food. And then Robbie <laughs> over here is like, I got you some, uh, sautéed scallops and a nice balsamic you know balsamic reduction yeah. sauce and i'm like the fuck is this and i like flip the plate out of his hand <laughs> give me mcdonald's <laughs> <sighs> yeah hey, well eddie said yellow this was yellow so. yeah finally I, well i mean a proper we would one. be remiss yeah, Robbie to not, listened. we would be remiss to not have argento in an italian horror month like that exactly. would be a fucking crime and i do agree to that even though you hate the man personally yeah, and exactly. professionally. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this one is starring Tony Masanti as San, Sam Dalmas. That's his last name? Yeah, it's got a weird last well, name. That's a dumb name. Uh, so uh, Tony was mostly a TV actor at the time, credited in uh, some Alfred Hitchcock Presents stuff. He was on the Fugitive series and uh, NYPD. But he's likely best known for his role in The Incident 
with Martin Sheen and Bo Bridges in 1967. Susie Kendall as Julia. Uh, she was in Psycho Circus with Christopher Lee in 1966, To Sir with Love in 1967, and most recently she had a minor role as a uh, voice actor in Berber and Sound Studio in 2012. Yeah. Well, wow. yeah, 2012. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Enrico Maria Salarno, close enough, Mm -hmm. as the uh, Inspector Morosini. He was a staple of Italian film and television, writer of the anonymous Venetian, star of a few seasons, yeah, Rented Lips, star of Seasons of Our Love, and it happened in 1943. So with the actor uh, who played Morris, uh, what was what's his name? Uh, Salerno? Is it- Enrico Marie Salerno. Yeah, so I was digging through his IMDb today and I came across another movie. He did. I have to throw this out here because I don't know. It's like the most it's the worst thing I've ever seen on IMDb, I think. Um, okay. I, was, I was digging through and I found another movie he did called Dog Lay Afternoon. It's like, oh, is that some sort of Italian ripoff of Dog Day Afternoon? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, re- I read the synopsis. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's about a dog getting laid. It is about a, it's about a woman who is uh, traumatized because she watches her mother have relations Ooh, with a no. Doberman Pinscher. Oh my wow. God. I was making a joke. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's like, that's the worst thing I've come across on IMDb. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Guess what movie we're was doing it, next week? Was it a possessed dog? <laughs> yeah, it was I, I, I didn't dig in too deeply. Was, oh, I had to go God wash my eyeballs. Damn. Dog lay afternoon. Jesus Christ. It's got to be, uh, you figure, it's got to be a porn movie with that, right? With no. That title, but no, not that Tim. kind of a fucking porn I movie. thought it was going to be a porn, and I thought it was just going to be like, you know, just well, a parody yeah. on the title. I, I, that's I, what I didn't think that actual dogs were going to be involved in. To That's be what I fair, thought. It'd be a parody or something, but no. To be That's... fair, we don't know that it's not a porn. <laughs> so, just floating the, it out there. For the furries. Uh, so then we've got Eva Renazzi, who plays Monica, best known for her role in Funeral in Berlin in Pink Jungle. She considered this role career suicide. Uh, She took a break from acting in 1972 because she was sick of just being typecast as the hot girl in movies. And in fact, she rejected a role for the Bond movie, You Only Live Twice. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, she was going to be the Bond girl. Yep, yep. And her letter to the producers read, Bond pictures are good for pretty girls, but not actresses. But I'm bummed. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. She's not one wrong. Thing, one thing I came across, a uh, little bit of trivia about her, was that she is apparently the only leading lady that James Garner has ever spoke poorly of, and he called her a Nazi bitch. Damn. So, yeah, so. Mm. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, rough one. Could have She could have been in the dog fucker movie, though. Could have been worse. Yeah. Uh, so then we've got Umberto Rajo as Alberto. Uh, he was in Vincent Price as The Last Man on Earth, and he was in the Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dennis Rodman vehicle double team. Hell oh, that's yeah. A good one. All right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Robbie, if you have anybody else to shout out in the, the uh, roles in here, there's just so many massive Italian and German cinema there's, stars in this. It's There's one that I'll mention when we get to him that I recognize from – Star Trek and a couple other places. Uh, but just when we get in the movie, I'll mention him when we get to him. Okay. So we start off with a creep photographing a woman on the street. And I have, Creeper wow, can. this is just every Jallo movie, isn't yeah. it? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, the Cause set, it's, yeah. it's playing the, this is, it, yeah, I made a lot of connections with uh, Tenebrae. And that makes a lot of sense now. Because once again, I did not know that Argento did this movie. So you got a creeper yeah. cam, and then you got like la 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 <laughs> in the background. You're very creepy. Uh, and then we got him stroking a bunch of these pictures. Well, him or her, we don't know. To be fair, it is a jalo. Uh, and then stroking their collection of knives. We cut to a newspa- newspaper article: mysterious killing of an 18 year old girl. 
So now we meet Sam, the American writer, and his buddy Carlo. Again, a writer. Uh, a writer investigating mm-hmm. a series of murders. Yep, yep, trope. Who speaks <laughs> flawless Italian, by the way. Really? I don't speak a lot of Italian, Tim, so I, I can't fact check you on that one, buddy. Well, no, because wasn't he, he, he supposed to get the, the idea that he was never in Italy before, right? Yeah. But he speaks oh, Italian yeah, fluently. Yeah, true, oh, right. True. Well, he was there for like two years, though. I guess that's that some people do that. They just move to another country and they're like, I'll pick up the language. I always feel like I'd do that and not pick up the language because I'm just stupid. Still haven't learned English. Uh, I'll have you know I'm quite, quite astute at English. I'm getting there is what I'm saying. So uh, we learned that Sam lives in Italy with his girlfriend. Uh, He's broke and he's been kind of forced to write these uh, shitty manuals, though, because while well, he's maybe not got the inspiration as a writer that he once had, maybe maybe he just is lacking that, that creativity again. He's in a I, rut. I was going to point out the fact that he said that he got paid to write a manual on how to preserve endangered birds, which should yeah. come into play later in the movie. It does. He has no fucking clue what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody Plus, who maybe helped him do research knows knows what it's about. And he, he really rubbed me the wrong way with this little speech of his about, oh, I was going to be America's next biggest writer and now I'm writing pamphlets about endangered birds. And I'm like, you think you're too fucking good for that? You think because you're a novelist, you're too good to do other types of writing? <gasps> wow, this movie really rubbed Canvas the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so he leaves after getting paid and uh, on his way home he walks by the uh the creepiest art gallery ever with now this is bizarre to me the the double doors leading mm-hmm. into it that have it's an exhibit fucking fire hazard right yeah that's a bizarre setup anyhow he sees a uh, a young woman standing in the art gallery wrestling around with a uh a masked person in a uh a trench coat type get up thing the the whole you Black, know shiny your standard coat. Uh, yeah, yeah, your standard yeah. Jallo murderer outfit. Uh, they're they're having a tussle in the art gallery, and as he goes in to try to to prevent this from from occurring, he gets locked in between the uh, I don't know, like in the weird decompression chamber, like you well, have in the a killer submarine. press the button so the other door closes, yeah. so yeah. he can't yes. he can't leave. Yes, yeah. So he's stuck watching and just kind of pounding on the glass, like trying to get people's attention and stop the murder from taking place. Uh, the woman gets stabbed and, and, and starts kind of crawling toward him as the killer escapes. And uh, the police show up because he was able to get the attention of someone to go uh, make a phone call, get the cops here. By the way, the cops show up in Italy real quick if there's something going on like this. Not, yes, not here in the States, you know. Well, yeah, they don't they have sh- to protect you here in the States, so... Like, oh, someone's in danger? That's not our problem. Well, think about this. If you're you know, an Italian cop and you get a phone call, it's like some dumbass American is stuck in a glass room. You're going <laughs> to rush right over to watch yeah. that. <laughs> That's pretty true, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but you uh, walk down the street, you turn your lights off, and you watch them for half an hour. I have, yeah, but they, you probably saw did that, Tim, and then saw the woman and was like, ah, shit, now i got to intervene. So anyhow, they uh, they you know go into there and and uh, around the back they also find the uh, the husband of the woman who was just stabbed, uh, who is the uh, owner of the art gallery. Yeah, yes. and That's... they they then uh, the cops. By the way, the, the, we get this thing about where the cops say, hey, "Stick your hands in your pockets while you're, we're walking around here. We're doing an investigation. I don't want you touching shit." And then right. the cop proceeded to touch everything. Yes, I did. <laughs> like, ten seconds later, he grabbed the the handle or something with a, like right after saying that. Yeah, he's licking doorknobs. There's not all sorts mention, of stupid shit. She's still like bleeding out on the floor, and they're, <laughs> yeah. and they're not doing anything about it. <laughs> she's fine. She'll they're just be okay. standing there talking and like looking at her and taking pictures, and she's still like wounded. Like they don't know how wounded she is at this time. <laughs> like they're just like. Yeah. They're like, are yeah, we done here yet? <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah, she's, she's like, help me, help me. They're like, shut up. We're trying to solve your murder. She's like, I'm not dead yet. And they're like, no, well, 
Plus, we when they lift her, wrote you off. <laughs> when the EMTs lift her up, they're like twisting her body around a whole bunch and stuff. I'm like, remind me never to get hurt in Italy or have an emergency because they're not very good at this. Because she could have, she fell down those stairs. She could have a busted neck, man. You don't know what's going on there. She got a concussion, yeah. Well, maybe the art gallery is more expensive than like a cop can afford to go to regularly, so they're trying to stretch it out. And <laughs> oh it. yeah, really enjoy the ambiance. It's a yeah. table of cheese over there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to investigate. Yeah, that <laughs> spread they got. Uh, hmm, this is wonderful. Uh, so yeah, then then he just picks up this bloody glove on the ground. Like, he proceeds ah, to touch might... it. And yeah, smear he's... smear the evidence all around on it. Sticks his hand in it, starts moving oh, it around. We're going to find out there is more than enough evidence on that glove to get what you need. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because the science that they use in this movie is spectacular. <laughs> Honeywell 1200. I couldn't even yeah. find it on the internet. You looked it up? I tried to, yeah. Isn't Honeywell hmm. the thermostats it... that are in a lot of houses? It is. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Huh. Honeywell I didn't know is there were... the in- Honeywell is the internet, Tim. That's... Oh, there you go. <laughs> they they scrubbed it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now we uh, we cut to Sam being interrogated, and he's like, "Look, man, I already told you three times what the fuck the story is. I'm getting tired. I got to go home. I got to get out of here. I'm flying back to America in two days." And the inspector is like, ah, that's a cool move. Hey, can I see your passport real quick? Oh, my God, this part. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, don't give him your passport, buddy. They that's can't. not a good Just idea. Use your eyes, not your hands, right? They can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice passport yeah. you got there. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. <laughs> so he just takes the passport. He's like, huh, and he stuffs it in his desk. And the guy's like, hey, can I have my passport back, asshole? He's like, nah, I think you're going to hang out around here for a while just till we clear all this mess up. And I'm like, no, I don't think that's how this works. No, they cannot do that. <laughs> so <laughs> you Sam can't just freaks take your out. fucking passport. Jesus Christ. So he freaks out and he's like, damn it, I'm going to give me the phone. I got to call the consulate. And he, they're like, well, you can call whoever you want, but it ain't going to happen. the president of the United States. Yeah. 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 So they, they get him the phone, and he just calls up and cancels his reservation for the for the Why? flight. Why would that be a fucking first phone call? I think he wants to stay. I think he's pointing. Yeah. I think he's showing them through this act that he wants to like work on this. Like he's interested in staying and seeing it through. I, I only get, assume. Yep. I get if you're like, look, you're right. I'll. I need to help clear my name, maybe. But mm-hmm. like at this point, the broads alive, and yeah, you were they locked. Said, uh-huh. They said it was just a flesh wound. Yeah, and you were locked away from her. Just a flesh wound that she was all contorting on the floor and freaking out about and passing out and unable to walk. <laughs> this flesh wound on her abdomen. <laughs> And she can't remember what the killer's face looked like, but this guy who was across the street while she was getting stabbed, she was having the argument, is going to recognize the killer's face. After he repeatedly said, I didn't get a good look at it. Even though it shows the camera, like the the footage that was shown in, he clearly got a good look at the killer's face. But he's a man. Eh, A little bit. Anyway, they have a lot of problems with this. I can tell. <laughs> so, yeah, he he cancels his flight. Then on the way back home, he damn near gets beheaded by a cleaver. I didn't know what the hell that thing was. It went right through a pipe. Yeah, that was a fucking hell of a cleaver. It looked kind of like an axe, if you ask me. No, but uh, thank, thank it God, like a big the pizza cutter. It did. It had a, it had a curved blade. Yeah, like a scimitar, maybe. I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, it cuts right through a fucking pipe in the wall. And, th- and it's great that this old lady is like, uh, look out. <laughs> and he ducks. <laughs> like, I don't know if an old lady tells me to look out. I don't think my instinct is duck. No, but, I'd, uh, I'd stand there like an idiot shocked that someone, you know, had the gall with to your speak head cut to me. off. <laughs> yeah. You'd be standing there with your head cut off. Exactly. <laughs> um, I would too. I get it. So uh, he's like, fuck, thanks. Uh, well, I guess I'll go home now. Slides back over to his pad. And he's uh, telling his lady friend, Julia, what's what? And she like, doesn't seem to believe him, or she's completely unfazed by what she's hearing right now. 
Well, to be fair, the way that he is delivering this news, like what happened? To you? Well, I saw a girl get murdered today. I had to go to the yeah. police thing, and yeah. then somebody almost mm-hmm. cut my head off. La di da, like yeah. any other day in fucking Italy. It's like, ah, so you know, the that's usual. why she doesn't believe him. Like, or maybe that is every other day in Italy. Maybe you just always watching some broad get killed. And you almost get beheaded, man. Yeah. In Manhattan, they hit you in the face with poop. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Candace. <laughs> in Manhattan, they hit you in the head with poop, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the best that you can have, have happen. <laughs> the, the best thing. I'm going to find that clip uh, and send it to you. You got to, yeah, I got to check that out. And if you want to check that out, you can tune into our bonus episode that we just uh, recorded an hour ago, <laughs> where where we talk Still about a, a dog saving a possessed girl, and ta- and uh, Tim talks about a, a somebody getting beat over the head with shit in Manhattan. So, yeah, then they bang one out. You know, because she's like, oh, it sucks. You know, the whole being falsely maybe uh, Very accused. Very tame. Yeah. No <laughs> nudity. Not at all. Yeah. I was like, Tim, how do you like this movie so far? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. They're getting right into it. I mean, it doesn't sort of like gang busts like last week's movie. But I'm like, okay, I can I can watch 10 minutes before we start to see something good. But no, nothing. No, nothing. So then, while they're banging it out, though, he remembers. He's like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the details of the murder while we're having sex. And I'm like, that's that tracks. Yeah. Right? That's what that's I usually the, think about. That's the only way I can finish. Well, yeah. Quick, tell me again about that lady you saw die. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> Calm down. Uh, so then uh, Sam goes in the next morning. He checks in with the police. Because, you know, now he's an investigator, I guess. Right. He's a yeah. Detec- yeah. Detective yeah, that Sam. makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, the cops are just going to let him do their job. Yeah, they're they're yeah. telling him everything they know, walking <laughs> yeah, him through everything, yeah. the finest details. Yeah. So it does have that Halloween 3 logic of the, like, doctor that's now the detective. We've got the writer that's now the detective. With like, the police's it- blessing. We all know how yeah, much in, the police right. love it when you interfere with their investigations. I mean, they did everything but give him like a junior detective badge. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> that would have been so good. That would have been a great scene if they give him a badge that's a sticker. They're like, here, just put this on your jacket. <laughs> if you get in trouble, show this to anybody. <laughs> and here's a whistle. <laughs> just blow the whistle. In case you get raped. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Actually, so- I misquoted him. I'm looking at it. He says, if you're lucky, you're hit over the head with a bag of feces these days. That's what he said. Wasn't if a bag you're of lucky? If you're lucky. What would, what would be unlucky? Well, yeah, that's what he, that was he, what he's implying, is that if you're so you lucky, that's killed. all that happens when you come into Manhattan. <laughs> that's insanity. And this guy's running for public office. Governor of New York. Wow. It's down between him, some other guy, and Rudy Giuliani's son. Oh, God. Ooh. Yeah, you want to see a fucked up face? Look at Rudy Giuliani's son's face. <laughs> For real. He's got his father's well, fucking vampire bite and just this fucking just most punchable face the size of a Nazi. Okay. <laughs> I know who you're not voting for. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're voting for the, the poop guy, right? Yep. That's your boy? Poop All right. for everybody. <laughs> uh, he really knows every household. <laughs> So uh, now the cops run the the glove through the computer, and it tells them, "Well, the killer was left handed." Wait, uh, Eddie. Before the computer thing, there was one scene I enjoyed where they do the lineup. Oh, the lineup! Yeah, oh, you God, didn't get to yeah. the lineup. Uh, where the the great line: "Bring in the perverts." Yeah. <laughs> Just see Tim, and the lineup is like a fucking movie theater, right? Yeah. I said this. This is how Tim and his wife met. She was trying to identify a different person. She saw Tim in the lineup and took video. Bring in the perverts. Uh, (laughs) I was close enough, but not exactly the pervert. Yeah. No, these are all registered sex offenders. (laughs) Yeah, and but not transvestites. Right, yeah, because they the the one um transvestite person that's there, they're like, get get them out of here. They're not a pervert, they're a transvestite, and he says, I'll yeah. say <laughs> <laughs> That was a fun little comedic aside that they threw in there. Why not? You know? 
Um, so yeah, then, then ah, it's not probably not one of these guys. So, but then, yeah, yeah, then they do the magic computer. Thanks. I, I totally spaced on that part. <laughs> uh, so the, they put the, the, use the magic computer that tells them, all right, so the killer is left handed. We know that. They also smoke cigars because there was a, a full cigar in the glove, I guess. Expensive no, cigars. No, they said that there was shreds of cigar tobacco that they know for a fact is Cuban. So it has From to be Havana. someone. Havana. Yes. Yeah, like they have, they know it's someone of means, and they know because there's fibers from an in, from English textiles that yeah. can't be found in Italy. So it's someone who has money and who dresses distinguished. Yeah, it dresses with elegance. Is how the, yeah, the, with the, elegance. That's right. And then the the science computer says, okay. It's, also, we know it's between a hundred and uh, fifty thousand people. So we're going to start interviewing Mice people. Mice cuts in 150,000 people. Yeah, it said 150,000 people match this description in, in this town. Yeah. So we're going to start interviewing them. <laughs> no, so uh, then, then then they're like, okay, so, uh, oh, and by the way, the girl that uh, we were maybe suspicious you somehow were involved in almost dying. Here's where she fine. lives. Yeah, <laughs> here's, her, here's her address. <laughs> then, not only that, but he comes out. What floor? What's the apartment number? Yeah. Fifth floor. They're like, yeah. she She went home to blah, blah, blah place. This is her yeah. apartment number. And then he sticks yes. his head in what floor? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. When's she going to be alone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not coming off great, buddy. All right. Well, well I don't good. think the police are coming off great when they tell them what floor. <laughs> well, right. That's what I was saying is like, they, so he can't leave, but they're going to tell them where she is cool so he goes over to uh monica's joint i think they're just using both of them as bait right if he's the killer tell him where the chick is that got away and then you just follow him until he tries to kill her well they do follow him this is true yeah yeah, yeah fair or may- so- maybe in italy they just have like a crowdfunded police model where you know whoever shows up gets to do the police work Oh God, that's it's great! It's like a voluntary police department. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, all right, I'll pay. I'll take over. Hey, you know what? Uh, for shits and giggles, how about uh, you're the one that's uh, guilty? <laughs> Fuck, I guess. So now he goes over to Monica's joint and talks to her husband for a minute, and he's like, "Hey, how you doing, creepy? Uh, how tall are you, by the way?" <laughs> yeah. uh, I notice you dress real well, and you're smoking. Hey, catch this pack of cigarettes. And he catches it with his left, left hand. hand. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. See, this guy's a pretty good detective there, Candace. I don't know Plus what Plus, he looks like is. the fucking Red Skull. <laughs> he does look like the Red Skull. Oh, my God. I thought he looked like a dime store Anthony Perkins. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, he yeah. totally looks like that. Anthony Perkins. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, so then we see our buddy, the, the killer, is out scouting out some uh, some talent at the racetracks. And I was like, oh, are we going to get some of the good, you know, strip nude for your killer? He finds, or, or sorry, uh, uh, New York Ripper goes out and finds the wealthy broad and does the, the toe trick with her, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing fun like that in this movie. <laughs> the toe trick at the track? I guess that'd be the hoof trick. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's job. only... It's only Robbie looking at those kind of movies on Internet Movie Database. So uh, <laughs> then we got Sam and uh, Julia, and and they're reviewing the prior victims back at their pad. And Julia's oh. over there just fingering herself while they're looking at the women that that died. He's like, okay, so here's the first one. Uh, this woman, uh, she worked at an antiques store. And she's dead. And then we got a, a prostitute, and then she's dead. I like that she was, the prostitute was found under the bridge where she took her tricks. Yeah, yeah. down there with Anthony That's Kiedis. That's where I drew some blood. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great minds. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, you actually came up with a lyric, so that's that's even better. Uh, so he's like, all right, so I'm going to go over there. And uh, I want to talk to these women because that's not a weird thing for a writer who's not the police to do. Mm-hmm. That's totally mm-hmm. normal. 
Yeah, you almost never see the cops talk to anybody except for him. Yeah, I have yeah, a question about that, Tim. Do you think they're feeding him information so he can help solve the case, or are they trying to make him incriminate himself so they can convict anyone of the crime because of all the pressure that's on them? Like, do you think, think they're trying to way, help him? Or well, I know you're... what you're trying to get at. Folks, <laughs> but <laughs> I think uh, usually the cops in Italy are usually portrayed as more uh, inept and lazy. So I could believe it a little bit more. Oh, but yeah. I think definitely, I think they're using both of them as like little fucking uh, traps to see if he's the killer. Sit, give him the name because they don't say that we're going to give you somebody to follow you. You're going to have a bodyguard following you all over. And that's why they tell him where she is because they figure that way we're going to either find out that he's going to do it or he's going to do our job for us. But he didn't uh, get help with a false confession if that's what you're getting. <laughs> you don't think they were just trying to pin it on them, you know, because they had pressure coming up yeah, from on top. And... They, they, they were just trying to solve a case. No, I think the writer fucked up. If I had to <laughs> float a theory, Candace. You know what? We should put it to a vote, actually, Tim. Yes, let's. You yeah, talking about all the all the votes on the internet. <laughs> oh man. So they yeah, then uh, Sam goes over to the antique shop. And uh, not a very flattering antique store owner. Uh, <laughs> He's really up in your personal space, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, look, just because you're going to have a gay guy or a guy that's supposed to be gay in your movie. If he looked like he Donald Plassance. Uh, yeah, he does. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and by the way, you don't have to have him literally hit on anybody that's male yes you do uh, Eddie. Yeah, but yes you do okay <laughs> that's how that's how gay people were portrayed in tv and movies back then you never no, saw I a know, serious gay character and that's the only way that they were able to get anything on the screen i know and, but and yeah, the, it is uh a little bit heavy-handed it's like the the pat oswalt bit too about he how he almost got cast as the gay neighbor in a show but they kept having him come in and make like snarky smart remarks and he's like can I just be a dumb guy? Like, <laughs> why do I have to be like, it's, it's weird how they always have these specific. Can he be a Lincoln cause... log Republican? Oh my God. I was talking to my wife about that shit. Mm -hmm. Did you, did, did you hear about this one, Candace? No, you guys talk about all sorts of political shit that I have no idea what you're talking about. You guys, because you guys it's... dig into the dregs of just the absolute fucking worst things in the world. No, this, this one's hysterical. So apparently there's a, a, like a gay branch of the GOP. They've been around that's... for at least 30 or 40 years. Uh, They're around yeah, yeah. with Reagan, I think. Called the Lincoln Log Republicans, right? Okay. And uh, they're mad because there's a GOP convention going on in Texas, and they're not allowed in. Hmm. Yeah. What did they think was going to happen? Exactly. Well, what were they wearing? Right? <laughs> they got a victim blame, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm, it's, I'm glad to see nothing's changed since 1970 Italian movies in there being fair and even handed with gay people and characters. Wonderful. So uh, he says, he's asking the guys like, Hey, uh, what? So uh, the, the girl that died, tell me about her. He's like, Oh yeah, she's a woman. I don't care about her. Uh, anyhow, uh, there was a guy that came, or a person came in here and bought a, about a painting. And uh, then that, the person that bought the painting is like, it's a grisly painting too. It was very barbaric. Uh, they bought it from that woman, and then that woman died. Oh, they so also Sam's point like, out it's a haunted the, painting. They point out the fact that the woman who was killed was also a lesbian, and the guy was like, "I don't have a problem with that because I'm not racist." I'm like, "The fuck does that have to do with lesbians?" <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm racist. I'm I okay with lesbians. Her. I'm not racist. <laughs> Thing, and that's why he yeah. votes Republican. Not exactly yes. the, the brightest bulb. Yeah. Well, I guess then that was Patton Oswald's dumb gay character, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't even understand that that's not like an ethnicity or something. All right. So uh, then he goes, hey, do you have a, can you, what can you tell me about the painting that the person bought? And the guy's like, well, I have a picture of it because I'm psychotic. You want to see it? He probably has <laughs> like, it for insurance reasons in case it gets stolen. Right. right. Yeah. Well, but once we find out who the painter is, I don't think that's a big 
ticket <laughs> item, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I did. I pointed I mean, out. Yeah. I pointed out that like. Uh, I'm calling it right here that this painting has something to do with her childhood and something traumatic. Because at this point, I was like, I know who the fucking killer is. But and I called oh, it too, yes. and I was Look like, so. You. And I called everything from the beginning. Maybe you don't like Argento because the two of you are telling the same story. In your <laughs> We're just head. too much alike. I just got back from getting a bottle of water. Candace, are you going to say that you called the twist? Of this yes. movie? Yes. As soon as I saw the painting, I was like, I fucking, I know exactly what's going on here. I know exactly. And I called it. Okay. Well, congratulations, Candace. So, what do I so, win? Uh, yep. Uh, you know what? You get to join us next week for another Jalo movie. Oh, and you get, boy. <laughs> and you get an Italian junior detective badge. Yes. Oh, sweet. <laughs> if you're ever in trouble, just show it's a it around. Sticker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, yeah. And the painting is it, it's a woman being stabbed in a field in the snow. A field in England. Actually, oh, a nice yeah. painting. I like it. I'd buy it. I did yeah? like that painting. Well, he liked it too. Sam, it looks 100 you... percent better in color too. By the way, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So Sam liked it too because he hung the print up in his house. And I'm like, that's we. I get you're doing an investigation or whatever. First of all, and you're his, not even supposed to be doing that. His girlfriend is really into it. Oh she yeah, yeah. She cannot she's, take her eyes off of it. Yeah, she's. By the way, she is fucking thrilled throughout with with uh-huh. his investigation and delaying <laughs> yeah. the move and everything. Yeah, she's this just, guy. Yeah, he's disappointing her left and right. He's just putting the fucking thing up on the wall and running out on him. Yeah, just very supportive. So. Then I have the killer stalks another woman back to her house where she puts on some tissue paper and goes to bed with a nice cigarette. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Man. She and puts when out- I saw this, it really it gave me like ugh, chills just thinking about that smoking in bed. Well, plus like the fact that she puts out like half of a cigarette. She only smoked half of it before she puts it out. I was like, that's fucking wasteful. Well, it's either the choice of that or falling asleep with the whole cigarette in your hand. Don't smoke in bed. True. Yeah. And that so didn't you seem did... like, uh, that didn't seem like practical sleepwear either. No. <laughs> but I did agree with no. the fact that as soon as you get home, you take that fucking bra off. That's what every woman does. Take this That's why thing of torture to every off of movie. Me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so you're saying realistic scene here, what's going on? Yeah. Excellent. I, I mean um, it might have been hot there. You don't know. Maybe that's why she was wearing something so flimsy. That thing was one-sided. I didn't know that was possible. But uh, I I was grateful. I'll tell you that. I'd like to see... Yeah, I had a little bit of hope when I saw it. I slept in like a silk little number because it's fucking hot. No. no. (laughs) We're talking about the other girl. We're not talking about... Play that music, Eddie. Uh, What, Ben Shapiro for you? No. Yep. (laughs) No. So, um... Yeah, I should get something. I bet I could mod Final Fantasy so I can get my bunny girl in that. That'd be pretty cool. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm like, God, I, I'm pretty sure she's going to burn the joint down. But uh, nope. Killer those, comes in. Yeah, those clothes look flammable, too. They're very they uh, look, gauzy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like I said, it looks But they like go up in flame in like half a second. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's like flash paper. Flash paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Maybe she's a female magician. <laughs> or a bookie. Yeah. Or a bookie. <laughs> yeah, Tim. <laughs> bookie runs out with her tits out. That's <laughs> gone. <laughs> no, you so, take the uh... spread or not? What? What? Yeah, I'll okay. take a spread, all right. <laughs> Lay down. Uh, so the, the killer sneaks in and uh, cuts her clothes away and uh, then just slashes her ass up. Okay. Through the language of cinema, am mm-hmm. I to believe that the killer put that knife straight up the cooch? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Come on, Candace. It's an Italian giallo movie. It's not a glory hole. It's a gory hole. Am I right? 
Was that your red yeah. ink joke? No, I just came up with that. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> you know what? I was like, Partial why you set it up to? Okay. Like, oh, wait a second. Where, where did he, exactly did he stay? Yeah, over? I know. I, I just, yeah. I was trying to think of like Happy Trail, and I was trying to, was it a Glory yeah, Trail? What was yeah. in the New York Ripper, what they call it? Well, hey, if they outlaw abortion, you're going to be seeing a lot more of these taking oh. place. See, I'm being political. You're not uh, supposed so, to yeah, do no, that. He uh, he separates the partition between the ass and the puss is what he does. Oh, uh, or, God. or she, little impromptu episiotomy, right? She has a uh, cloaca now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <she's> got, a <laughs> cloaca. got a pouch to hold her young. Yeah, <laughs> that looks business like the Joker. And, it looks like a. Bi- Did ever tell you how I got of... these scars? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Why so serious? My first son was nine pounds. <laughs> My first son was Edwin Jefferson. Ah, <laughs> uh, C-section, baby. <laughs> That's it. You know, in, in grade school, uh, everybody did the joke of the, have you ever had your mom's uh, uh, pussy or whatever? Or like, yeah, touch I know your mom's what you're talking pussy. about, yeah. And then I was like, no. And then like, what are you, a butt baby? And I was like, no, I was taking C-section. Yeah, I always say, no, I was adopted. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Asshole. (laughs) Now who's the dick here? (laughs) Hey, also, fuck you. (laughs) How about that? Uh, You know, you still still touched it, though. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. The logic (laughs) doesn't hold up. I get it. All right. So uh, we go back to the inspector. Who are you arguing with? I, I was I have conversations in my head <laughs> sometimes. It's the only way I can have an intelligent conversation. Whenever he so, tells uh, that story in his brain, those kids are standing there right next to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in the devil's backbone, you just got a bunch of ghost kids around you. Oh yeah, they're, no, with their they're hands on under, your shoulders. No, those kids are buried under the house. So oh. these are children that are in grade school making fun of me today. Uh, so, oh my god. <laughs> You just I've have never... random school children walking up yeah. to you and asking if you yeah, had your yeah, mom's pussy. <laughs> I did. That that should be the the thing is well you you say well then I did though. I had your mom's pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh the old Inspector Morosini shows up because he's got some new clues to show Sam <laughs> because Sam's a cop now. <laughs> and Julia gets pissed off. She's like, "Look, can you get the fuck out of here?" Because he's not a cop. We're we're supposed to be leaving. What are you doing? And Sam's like, yeah, no, I, they need me at the office, babe. And she's like, what? <laughs> you don't work there. They're not paying you. What are you doing? I just wanted to so, point out this instance of bad writing and bad filmmaking uh, in general. Okay, please do. Because he's standing there and he's staring at the painting again. And he says out loud, what's happening to me? This damn thing is turning into an obsession. You show that, Argento. You don't say that. Ooh, you don't say shots, right out. <laughs> you Plus, I think we already got tell. that, right? Yeah. The guy's got his fucking passport back. His girl wants to get the yeah. fuck out of the country. Yeah. For all he knows, he could be still set up as the fucking killer, right? We, pick, yeah, we picked yeah. up on that a long time ago. You didn't have to say it. Yep. Yeah. Sorry they're hurting your movie, Robbie. No, that's fine. This is... <laughs> I'm teasing. Uh, so, yeah, then Sam heads back to help him out. And he's like, all right, I got to show you something. It's like, okay, well, come, I'll go see it. So the inspector's like. pencil disappear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the, no, then he, he doesn't show him anything. He says, so do you remember anything else? And he's like, what? No, I told you everything. It's like, all right, here's your passport back. You can You can leave now. It seems like, no, nah, I'd rather not. I'd rather talk to the pimp the, the, of the, the hooker that you thought yeah, might have killed her. the second uh, victim. And the cop's like, sure. Yeah, he's like, oh, I can arrange that for you. And they're like, That's they're like, no uh, problem. making jokes to each other. He's like, I got to go yeah, to but- a press conference. Oh, yeah, what are you going to say? And they're just making light conversation <laughs> like they're the oldest friends in the world. Yeah, the but they're using now, they're... him because now he can do all this stuff that cops legally can't do, right? I'm sure they can um... legally talk to an incarcerated pimp. Yeah, if that guy doesn't have his lawyer with them, maybe whatever he says doesn't count. We don't know Italian law, but 
that's just a regular Joe Schmo from America. If whatever he says or whatever he finds, he's, he's American. He can do whatever yeah. he wants. This is that's in this right. foreign country. We can do whatever we want, Tim. That's a good point. That's international <laughs> law. Yep, international law is Americans. It's, it's, it's. I think they call it American exceptionalism. <laughs> We're an exception to the rules. So uh, no, plus uh, maybe the pimp would like trust him more because he's not a cop. Like maybe I don't know. And when you so, meet yeah, this then, pimp, you realize that it is still hard out there for a pimp. Yep. Because this guy is looking like he's had a rough go of it. <laughs> this he looks like guy. Gomez Adams. <laughs> oh, Robbie, you beat me to it because I'm just looking at my note. It looks like a bug-eyed John Aston. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he, he looks pretty rough. So the cop gives the press conference. He's like, do I look about... like a pimp? Do I look like I would abuse women? Yes. Yep. <laughs> I mean, you don't look like you wouldn't. I'll put it that way. <laughs> it wouldn't be a surprise, we'll just say. No, so yeah, Morosini gives the uh, news and interview about the killer, and the killer just uh, happened to be watching it. So they call in like it's a live call in show. No. So he, but he does call the detective. And now he's for like, our hey, first man. phone call, here is the killer. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, you're going to have another murder to oh. solve by the weekend. I was I was gonna point out how funny would it be if all of a sudden Donald Duck was on the other end of the line. Oh. <laughs> I was like, we should cut that into this. Like all the phone oh, scenes have it so be good. the killer from New York Ripper, and then for all the sex <laughs> scenes, put in put in strip nude for your killer scenes. <laughs> okay, so we're putting together the perfect movie. Yeah, exactly. So you've oh, got yeah. so you've got the Donald Duck calls. Yep. You've got the sex scenes, and then the ending has to be be the beyond the ending. <laughs> <laughs> what the ending of the beyond no where they the walk into the strip- painting together and they hold hands yeah and then it no then from that it goes to strip nude for your killer and he tries to fuck her up the ass <laughs> she's like what he's just looking out for her the last one that got pregnant look what happened right yeah that was the best ending. I uh, love that ending. It is, I swear so to God, stupid. out of all the movies I've seen in my entire I, life, I cannot think of an ending of a movie that makes me happier. I told my <laughs> wife what the end of that movie was. She just looked at me like, so confused. And I'm like, yeah, I know. You can't just show it. You have to see it. Yeah, yeah. you, yeah, you yeah. can't explain it. You have to do I got it. it. I've got a YouTube channel that all the episodes get uploaded to. I, I've got to clip that out of that fucking movie. And I don't know if there's nudity specifically in that scene. I don't but think so. I think, yeah, I think there's none. I, I've got to upload it because it's the funniest fucking ending of a movie. So, uh, yeah, we uh, we go out the interview with uh, Stuttering Gomez. Uh, <laughs> so who, long. He's not a pimp. He's a receiver of gifts, right? Those girls just give me gifts. And I have that. This guy is ahead of his time because now isn't the scam like uh, Vimo and all the other fucking things and buying gift cards and shit like that and sending it to chicks, right? Venmo? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, but the chicks are giving him the gifts. Yeah. That's well, that's how you get around it, right? They're not yeah. giving me money. They're giving me gift cards. They're giving me. They buy. They give me a Ferrari. They give oh, me yeah. an apartment every month, right? Yeah, do, do you yeah. guys remember Craigslist and with the prostitutes on there? They'd be like, for four dozen roses, I will uh, do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will tell you this: for the longest time, I thought Craigslist was nothing but looking for roommates and trying to sell you a fucking bike. Mm-hmm. And when somebody's like, no, no, you don't understand what fucking Craigslist is. And I, <laughs> when, that first time I went on it, I'm like, holy fuck. But yeah, Candace is right. That was a thing. Roses. How funny would it be to show up with the roses? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you said now you legally have to That's suck right. my dick. Otherwise, I'm calling the cops. We're going to have a problem here. <laughs> Hey, that was extra good. Here's a couple of tulips on top of that. <laughs> I like some tulips on my organ. Better than four yeah. roses on your piano. Yep. yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the pimp's got like, look, I got no leads so long. And he's like, all right, bye. He's like, no, wait, why are you leaving? I'm like, dude, you live with this affliction of saying so long at the end of sentences. You should anticipate no, this. He doesn't. When he comes into the cell, he doesn't even sit down. And the guy says, yeah. so long. And he's like, oh, okay. And he just turns around and walks around. And the guy says, no, no, hold on, hold on. 
Yeah. I don't so think it works to give that up way. Pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's it going? So long. All right, we'll see you. <laughs> I had to get strip searched to come into this fucking prison to talk to you, man. Now you're going to tell me get the hell out of here in two seconds, and I'm going to go you okay. Can't, you can't talk to me like that. I'm pretending to be a cop. What are you doing? <laughs> Look at my Look badge. At my sticker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I got it. I got it. Ran out of the gummy part on the top, so I got to like hold it up for you but this is a badge i'm telling you so uh, yeah, he's got he's like because he's holding look. his pocket <laughs> <laughs> he just stuck it to like a back of a, a, a piece of cardboard or something so he flips it you know <laughs> uh, so yeah no leads there so i'm glad we had that scene then uh we we cut to sam and julia walking around in the dark and they're being tailed by a guy mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, a car just fucking blindsides the dude tailing him. <laughs> and you notice two people in the car. Uh-huh. Wait, one they, dude. They can't be two people. We only saw one killer. What's up? Yeah, the, they must have an accomplice. So a dude pops out of the car, and he's the craziest looking dude ever. What the with a, down is this Robert is, Durst. This is the guy I recognized. Okay. There. So his name is Reggie Nalder. And he was in Star Trek. He was in Battlestar Galactica, the, the Manchurian Candidate, Salem's Lot. Damn. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, very distinctive. With that face, yeah. With that face, it's easy to yeah. put just a little bit of makeup on. Yeah. And so that when I saw him, it's like, yeah, I've seen him in a bunch of movies and thought that he would have a bigger role. But um, he's very, yeah. he's wearing a very subtle and blending yeah. in canary yellow jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with with a blue hat. It. Yeah. And, uh, he does a little uh, cat and mouse game with our buddy Sam. So oh, Sam gets Julia. God. He's like, "You're you're okay. Why don't you just leave?" Yeah. And she's like, "He dumps what? her." <laughs> he dumps her <laughs> off. He's like, "I'm gonna go get a cop." And I'm like, "Aren't you a cop?" I mean, you <laughs> think you are. So, <laughs> so yeah. Then we get the uh, the cat and mouse game that Candace yeah. loves Ooh. this scene. <laughs> right. Them in the uh, the the parking garage for the buses. You weren't feeling it? No, yeah, it was uh, real tense. A mile a minute, my heart was beating. <laughs> okay. I was real scared. Uh, what about when, when Sam gives him the slip, and then he slips into a, a busy uh, cafe? And then the I, dude just gives up? He's like, all right. What I did away. like is the fact that Sam, like, followed him. Like, he just, I was like, that's a pretty good move, actually. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. dude's probably not expecting you to follow him. <laughs> right. Because oh. yeah, who in their right mind would do fan that? Club. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then uh, I'll tell you the, the twist that I didn't expect is when, when Sam asks the guy at the hotel, hey, did you see a guy in a blue jacket with a, or a yellow jacket with a blue cap? And he's like, yeah, he went in there. And it's a convention of guys wearing yellow jackets and blue caps. I have right like, now. It looks like a bunch of minions. It, yeah. Is it a boxing club or a boxing union? Because they're talking about like their health care and their benefits I, and stuff like that. I think it's a That's boxing they all have union. Jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a union of guys that go around punching people. <laughs> they break up unions. So. They're a union to break up unions. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> We're, yeah, we're the local uh, 238 scab union. Every time there's a strike, we, <laughs> we step in. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, he, he lost him in the crowd. So uh, then Sam goes to talk to the cops about it. And uh, we find that he finds out You're from demoted. the cops. Yeah, you got demoted. Give me your badge. <laughs> you lost the guy. He, he, no, he the, has the, a water the, squirt gun. Yeah. That's what they issued him. <laughs> yeah. The, but then we find out that the uh, the person that was tailing him was a cop and he's dead. I'm like, dun, shit. Dun, dun. Well, maybe maybe they deputize Sam here. They're like, well, we need to backfill because we're down one. So well, yeah, the, the bodyguard was probably just some regular guy who, you know, he'd come into the police uh, station because he'd, you know, he'd witness some other crime. So they made him a bodyguard. If you want oh, to yeah, yeah. The robbery, follow this guy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I think this guy uh, might have <laughs> stole that from you. Why don't you follow him around and see, <laughs> see what he's up to? Yeah, the cops. Oh, this is great. So, Robbie, in your universe, the Italian cops are so bored 
that they're just turning every citizen against each other yeah, like, there's only, randomly. There's only like four cops in the whole city and they're just getting everybody <laughs> to follow each other around. <laughs> yeah, they spent all their budget on that fucking Honeywell 1200. They didn't have any yeah. money to hire actual cops. Yeah, so it's become like a, uh, a deputy detective Ponzi scheme is what's going <laughs> exactly. on here. I fucking love it. I'd watch that movie. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, so no, we, you know, found out that the, the cop dude died and, uh, that, that sucks for them. But, uh, Sam, they, uh, they tell Sam, hold on here. There's a dog barking outside. I got to go kill. I can't hear it. Mm-hmm. You can't hear it? Nope. nope. The dog gets huh. to live. Okay. That dog can live then. All right. So then they, uh, they're like, look, we had a tail on you, and, and uh, we're going to have a couple more people watching you and Julia now 24-7. So, uh, but I would suggest that you go back to the United States. And Sam's like, what are you talking about? Now I, I've seen the face of the person. So now I, I have evidence, right? I, it, we, can, we can bust the son of a bitch. So Sam's like, no, nah, I'm not going to the States. I'm going to stick around here and, and close this case. Then I can retire uh, being a cop. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure there's some uh, personal stakes involved, too, because now he's writing for the first time in years. He's actually writing. He's yes, got 50 pages that's done. that's true. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's making him feel alive. the juices flowing, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. his girlfriend juices are flowing, too, when she sees those pictures. No, she's mm. pissed. She, she's done with him. She wants him out. She's like, fuck this guy. So uh, then we get another woman stalked and killed. And, and this time it's with a straight razor. And I have uh, there's a couple of cool shots of a triangle staircase that Candace probably liked. <laughs> I mean, it's, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's, you know, it's not really my thing. Don't like triangles? Don't like staircases? It's... All of the above. <laughs> yeah, my family was killed by a staircase. So. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, it, it's a it's one of those things where it just like pads out the movie and it just adds visual flair while while pretty does not serve to further on the plot of the movie. So I'm just like whatever. It's not entertaining. I can tell you that. I just, I it might of, be it I might be visually good looking, but it's not entertaining. <laughs> I thought of you because I saw it and I was like, wow, that's a cool shot. And I'm like, oh, Candace, hey, she hates this. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes visually uh, enjoyable and art. It's not yeah. enjoyable. It's just there. And it's like, oh, that's pretty. I'm going to not remember this. You don't like pretty things? No. No, she doesn't like pretty things. Uh, her husband's they make me dick jealous sucks, and angry. And uh, she's never seen a big one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, then, uh, yeah, he, uh, Sam goes to uh, talk to the pimp again. Get some sage advice from the stuttering pimp. Uh, and he's like, look, I, I don't know anything, but I know a guy that know he could probably oh, get you Oh, this is my favorite need. guy in the whole movie. Oh, he's great. This I guy. love him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, all right, so here's the contact. What's the, what's the contact's name? He had the dumbest name. Is it like, fe- yeah, fe- like Fiena, fe- Fialo or? Fialo. Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. it was. So so he's like, yeah, Fialo's gonna gonna contact. He's like, oh, okay, cool. You said he has so, the stupidest name, doesn't he? Just have an Italian name. That's a that's a <laughs> dumb sounding name, Fialo. <laughs> it sounds like Giallo. And Why don't that's you get the, a real name of, like Edwin? You get, get yeah, that's a good name. See, somewhere there's an Italian podcast going Edwin, Edwin, Edwin. What a stupid name. Yeah, <laughs> it's just by the odds, it has to be. And they probably doing it the, right the same second. Yeah, they're covering Stranger Things, and they're like, Eddie, who'd name their fucking kid Eddie? That's a stupid name. So. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Just for a little bit of a derailment, have you watched more of Stranger Things? I watched the second episode, which is another hour and some odd fucking oh, minutes. Well, how long are the TV shows that you watch that an hour is just too long for you? I uh, watched an episode of, of uh, what was it? Uh, Trailer Park Boys yesterday. That oh, was God. about a half an hour. I what? take back everything. You get on to me for liking shit, and then you're like, Trailer Park Boys, man. That's good. Jackass That's fucking art right there. Jackass rules. Yeah, it's funny. No, it's... All right. No, the it The difference isn't. is I enjoy a lot of stuff, and you enjoy complaining. 
<laughs> about a lot of stuff. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Should have been born so, in New York. Uh, you should have. Yeah, you and Tim could be neighbors. You'd be driving just, each other just insane. Just bitching about everything. <laughs> now there's a sitcom. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Just perfect strangers as Candace and Tim. That'd be good. Candace would be the Balky, of course. I have some to be the weird... straight guy? Yeah, yeah, because Candace is from some weird town where they had a goat that was Yeah, there. that's where she got a funny <laughs> accent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm the one oh, with a yeah. funny accent, Tim. <laughs> so fallopian or whatever comes to sam's place and he's like fallopian. man those yeah and he's like man those fucking stairs almost killed me <laughs> he's like what it's like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna charge you extra for the fucking stairs you dickhead yeah because like, they say <laughs> he's the only he's the only apartment in the whole building everybody else is uh, all the other apartments are empty right yeah, yeah the whole place right. is abandoned yeah, they're they're because tearing they're it down. Tear it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus and they're Christ, it's living. A beautiful fucking apartment. Why the hell tear it down? But they need more. Well, real I don't estate. know. Maybe the weird boarded up fucking cellar down that, that the guy gets into later. I maybe think that's a, a liability. Maybe because half a dozen women have been murdered in the neighborhood. I don't know. It's no one wants to true. live there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bad neighborhood. That that could be it. So uh, it seems like, listen, there's a uh, yellow jacket guy that I want you to, to find for me. He's oh. like, yeah, I, I could do that. He, uh, hundred... He's part of a girls' soccer team in high school. He's a yellow jacket. Isn't that the ladybugs that Dangerfield was teaching? No, you've never seen That's yellow jackets. That's a new jackets. TV show. Right? Yeah. No, I've never it's seen very... that. It's an hour and two minute long episode, so you can't watch it. I'm not going to watch that shit. It's really oh, fucking you know what? good. I watched the new uh, Iron Chef last night. They brought that back. That's that's a show that's new long. or old, yeah. the old episodes. It's on Netflix. It's a new new series. Oh, okay. The oh. guy made uh, put squirt in a squirt gun. All right, you know, squirt the, as the in the soda squirt. Yeah, yeah, the soda squirt. That in was a squirt secret gun. ingredient. Squirt diarrhea. <laughs> No, that, was oh, that wasn't ingredient. that was squirt. That wasn't a secret ingredient. He was freestyling, Tim. He was uh, like, "Hell yeah, squirt and a squirt gun." <laughs> and he had a, a, a euro that he served on a dinosaur. So that was cool. Never okay. seen that before. See, I'm cultured. So uh, I just remember the, getting high as fuck and watching that show back when it was on. Just like, oh my god, everything here is so disgusting. Yeah. So then Falafel says it's going to be like 100,000 lira, and you're going to hear from me about uh, the Yellow Jacket Man tomorrow. Oh, or not. he's also like or- asking if the place is bugged. And the yeah, dude's like, yeah. no, it's not surveillance. And, and he's like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. And then, he's, and then he goes to give him money. And he's like, I can't take that. And he's like, go ahead and give me that money. <laughs> he's like trying to like whisper quietly. Okay. <laughs> Candace, though, to be fair, the biggest reel-to-reel recorder is sitting out on the table behind them. <laughs> so. And J&B. Yeah, but you can see if it's right. moving. Yeah, J&B. Oh, that's true. Yeah, maybe it's one of them quiet mode recorders that doesn't move, Tim. <laughs> so uh, then the, the guy's like, All right, I'll, you'll hear from me tomorrow. Bye. And he leaves. Yeah. Then the He's like, you'll called- never hear from me again. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> So then, then the killer calls Sam at his at his house. Yeah, and I'm like, how did? Okay, wait a minute. How did the killer get Sam? Did they give the killer Sam's number? I think sure. the cops put his number out on the on the street. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, okay. The killer had called the police department, and the police were like, um, yeah. you know, here, let me give you Sam's number. You can call him directly. He's that's yeah. that's oh, really good. He's like, want to report a murder? And he's like, <laughs> yeah. wait, hold on. Let me give you the officer in charge. <laughs> yeah. Right. So similar to, to them giving Sam uh, uh, the lady's <laughs> address and shit when they suspect that he was the killer. Yeah, they gave Sam's info to, to the killer. Yeah. That, that makes sense. That tracks for these fuckers. Just keeps They're it like, simpler. I can just see the, the the cop puts the phone down after talking to the killer and giving him the address. He's like, oh, all these uh, threads, they're going to just kind of take care of themselves, huh? <laughs> Killer's going to go find Sam. Sam found the killer. Killer kills Sam. Yeah, Everybody's actually, happy. Open and now shut that we're case. talking about it, I actually have a note that says, man, they really freely give away private information in this movie, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do not give uh, a fuck. <laughs> pretty ridiculous. 
Uh, so yeah, Sam records it though by sticking a, a sticky microphone onto the the phone. It's like a suction cup. <laughs> well, no, hold on, Robbie. You know, I used to have that, one of those. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say because that was that was how all the phones got tapped back on the old seventies and eighties shows. Yeah, how you does can that even the- fucking work? Uh, it's just a little microphone. You could buy them at uh, Radio Shack, and it just picks up the sound through the receiver. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I had one of those. Yeah, I would just think if anything, you'd have it where it goes like in front of the earpiece, so it can really pick it up instead of going. I'm wondering receiver, if it picks. Yeah. It probably picks up the vibrations. I would bet. No, I think it's just a microphone. Yeah. I was going to ask Robbie why you had that, but I feel like I shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I didn't have fun. <laughs> I was a very lonely child. So. Okay, that tracks. He recorded like, all to... of those uh, sex calls. Yeah. I was going to say, all those one nine hundred numbers. He recorded uh, them. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, it's cheaper. That, yeah, I'm not going to pay for it repeatedly. Well, yeah, I'm not one insane. Time, record that shit, and that's it. <laughs> I was going to say that sounds like a Tim Yobo move, and then he's charging his buddies to listen to it. <laughs> no, then what you do is then you just make your own nine hundred line half price and just keep it playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could just hear that. So you, it, it's the lady voice, right? The, they first call it, hi, sport. What's what's your name? And then the guy's like, uh, it's John. And then he plays the recording. It's like, ooh, hi. And then it just Tim goes, John. <laughs> and then it gets back Dad. to the lady's voice. And I'm what actually on wear? the line. It's not recorded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you pull the recording away and you just you, you yell into the phone, John. <laughs> Uh, or Man, it's we're like, smart. We need to do this. Yeah. It's a great idea. And you've just got multiple tapes. Like, all right, this guy wants it in the ass, so I got to get the yeah, ass. Tape you, out it is a play. great business plan to steal something and then just sell it at half price. It's win win. You're telling me, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me, buddy. Uh, you can get access to the blood bank by going to patreon.com <laughs> forward slash blood events. <laughs> hey, we got bonus episodes too. Uh, so he records it and he's like, uh, Sam, you need to forget about the murders. Uh, and if you don't stop, then I'm going to kill Julia. And he's like, I'm willing to take that risk. Yeah, for no whatever shit. Fucking she reason. has no idea what he's saying. She's just looking <laughs> at him. <laughs> yeah. He's it's like, very that's concerned fine. too. Cause it's probably not the first time he's done something like this. He left her yeah. while somebody was chasing her after they killed the cop. <laughs> I know. Yeah. This is insane. So Sam's like, huh? Well, time to take the evidence to my coworkers at the police department. <laughs> so he brings it in there, and this one guy's like, hey, there's this annoying squeaking in the background. I what the fuck is Candace. that? I think it's Candace. I think it's Candace. So Sam's like, yeah, okay, well, you, you research that. I got to go talk to the craziest person in the world again on the phone. So the, Sam gets it, his contact, calls him, and he says, hey, there's this guy named Needles, and uh, he lives out in the most crazy abandoned train yard in Italy. Just go down there and talk to him. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, are you really going to go down here, dude? This is this might be the time when you you tell the cop, like, hey, maybe one of you guys come yeah, with I me. Yeah, a bit of right. one that I can chew, officer. <laughs> because this place looks insane. Ah, that's okay, though. He heads on down to the abandoned yeah, He's going to make yard. a good chapter in his book, right? Yeah. True. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So he heads on down there, and uh, he finds this hovel that somebody's living in. And there's like a stale crust of bread that he smells for too long. Oh, yeah. What, the f- <laughs> what is he attempting to detect here, Robbie? You know about food. If, is if there they any were particular- recently by. Like, how crusty is this bread? Oh, is that it? Robbie? If it's got he... stale, yeah, I guess. If it's still soft, it's pretty fresh. I think he could feel that, though. I don't think you need to smell that. I'm wondering if the bread is fresh at all to even begin with before the fucking guy named Needles picks it up. <laughs> That's a good point. And then and is he and then using that... it to keep his needles in? Well, right, yeah. Oh, like a pin cushion. One... It's like a bread yeah. pin cushion. Uh, uh, you know what? That makes then sense because a lot of with a little bit of heroin left over, and it builds up. A lot of a lot of good sauces are made out of blood, so that makes sense. Ew. Uh and and Candace. What? That's gross. I'm not gonna blood? eat blood. Eating blood? Yes, that's disgusting. 
Candace. What? Don't act all disappointed what? in me because I'm I, not going to eat something that's made out of. I thought you were the vampire fan. Yeah. Does it mean I drink blood? I'm not insane. Ah, <laughs> uh, she just wants to be uh, one of those helpers. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm you, the got, you got to. Yeah. Okay. So eating bugs that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Protein, a lot of protein gonna, in blood. You're not going to have a blood sausage, but you're going to eat like a weevil. That's good. Uh, well, I'm That's a, the, on no, that. when I heard what a fucking blood sausage is, I'm like, you're just eating curdled blood with spices? What the fuck is wrong with you it's people? Not curdled? What are you talking about? It, it's no. not milk. What do you. Okay, how do you make you blood sausage? Say... Explain to me what is so appetizing about eating coagulated blood. Because well, our poor all, ancestors had to do it a thousand years ago. Well, I mean, maybe they that. did, but we don't. Yeah. Do, we also didn't use air conditioning back then, too. Exactly. That's by God, I'm sick. That it. shit. Yeah, <laughs> come on, man. No, well, first of all, when you make it, you you take the carton and you leave it in the fridge until it curdles. That's the first the blood thing you can from your blood man. Yeah. <laughs> the carton curdles. Of blood. <laughs> <laughs> you any chocolate uh, blood? <laughs> Chocolate blood? Yeah. Like a fat German kid or something? <laughs> the blood the blood man knocked my mom up. That's why I don't look like my dad. <laughs> the <laughs> friendly <you> blood man. <laughs> the blood man rings twice. <laughs> hey There we go. So uh, yeah, then he finds a, an insane syringe with blood in it, and Candace is like, yuck. Yeah. She wouldn't eat yeah. that. Yeah, hepatitis. No. Would you eat a hepatitis infected <laughs> junkie syringe? <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? Uh, and then he, he turns around and he sees the yellow jacket. Dude, uh, that's Needles, and he's dead. And I'm like, oh, that's why they call him Needles. Because of the Needles. It's not an ironic nickname. No, no. <laughs> so uh, then we go back to the lab. <laughs> and speaking of more fun science magic... <laughs> The guy's like, look, take a look at these two vocal patterns. You see oh, how they're man. different? Right. <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah, I see that they're different. He's like, yeah, well, this one only goes from like a 4 to a 10, and this one goes from like a 5 to a 12. So that means they're different people. He's like, oh, okay. Well, uh, then that's a, an accomplice or something. Great. So you're telling me that Needles wasn't the killer or might have been helping the killer. So wait, now my uh, caseload just doubled? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, so now Sam's got another fucking report he's got to file. <laughs> you think he's actually doing paperwork? Yeah, yeah, he's got to do the paperwork. <laughs> the cops offload the paperwork on him on unrelated cases. <laughs> oh, so we've got like a, a cop Miyagi scenario, too. They're like, you need to go wash all of all our cars because we think <laughs> there might be evidence underneath the dirt that you can only get at with wax. So, so... uh no, then then they're like, hey, and here's the other thing. We've been searching the Hanna Barbera uh, sound lab of all <sighs> yeah, the different. This facts. is yeah, this is up there. I don't know why they put this in with the fucking <laughs> printer printing out the fucking guy in a raincoat and all that other shit. <laughs> oh, that, but yeah. this is re- for real. This is ridiculous fucking list. <laughs> they listen to every fucking sound ever recorded because <laughs> they're just yeah comparing the sound wave of the 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 squawking or whatever in the background to literally every sound like, huh? Okay. So this is the sound of you sniffing that crust of bread. Yeah. And this, <laughs> this is the sound of you doing that, but wearing a slightly different jacket. Uh, and they're, they're like, we've already gone through a bunch of sounds and by crikey, we can't figure out what it is. So we're going to keep going through different sounds until we find it. I'm like, oh, okay. So no wonder the cops have to enlist all this citizen aid. They're just sitting in there fucking around listening to sounds, trying to compare them and smoking weed. Yeah. Don't you? They blew all their, all their budget on all the technical side. <laughs> dude, I want to meet the dude that sold them that technology because that guy Look, with rules. this, all you have to do is put a glove in, and we're gonna show, we're gonna print out a ninety percent accurate por- portrait of the killer. You don't need <laughs> all these right. police officers anymore. Let them go. Yeah, I tried to skip over that part, but you're right, Tim. They do print out a picture <laughs> of the killer <laughs> using like an old dot matrix yeah. fucking printer, and it's just a like a ASCII art silhouette of a person in a coat. I mean, you can make a fucking ape gift out of it and sell it. That's true. It could be an NFT. Make some money. 
It's a good point, Tim. Ah, so yeah, not a lot of help at the lab, right? We just we're still trying to figure out what that sound is. And that now, lab is probably like ninety percent of the budget for the cops. I think so. Yeah, with all the different reel to reels going on back there. They couldn't afford guns. They couldn't afford cars. Most of them don't have shoes on. They had to go yeah. out and physically order or pick up reel to reels of all the sounds in the world. Unless they just yeah. had them on hand. Yeah. They could you know what? It would have been quicker to just hire like a Foley artist, right? Have them in there just making the sounds or with coconut person. shells and or a blind person. Yeah, that's true. So uh, Sam's back. No, wait, hold on, Eddie. You're right. You're you're on to something there because the uh, the mortician. I'm pretty sure he was blind with those sunglasses that he was wearing. Yeah, that see, that's a good dude to have. That's blind. He was a mortician. (laughs) He's got the thickest fucking sunglasses on I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah, because then they don't have to deal with the uh, the the looking at the bodies so much. They don't get traumatized by all the blood and stuff like Candace. God. So, uh, so, this is the worst crime scene I've ever seen. And he's like, meh, whatever. It's... He's feeling around. He's like, oh, yeah, this is bad. This is real bad. Just smearing blood on everything. Why does it smell like pennies oh. in here? Yeah. Ooh, this must be his brain. It's like, yeah, that's, let's put that back, please. Uh, so, yeah. And I mean, this is the point where now Sam is just a fucking writing machine, right? He's home. He's just like telling Carla, oh, my God, I'm so invigorated. And I've been I've been knocking out all of these uh, this writing. It, something must have came loose in my brain and I'm something doing an excellent job. Loose. Yeah. And uh, Sam's like, uh, anyhow, here's here's this recording of the thing you can listen to, Carlo. And Carlo's like, oh, that's weird. There's a weird noise in the background. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, why don't you sit there and think about it while I go fuck while we Julia? Go fuck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, awkward. <laughs> yeah. Fucking awkward. And when the dude's like looks up and he's like, I'm gonna leave now, uh uh what's his face? Sam already has his shirt off. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He's just fucking getting into it. You don't have to leave. No, you stay there. I like it when the people watch. <laughs> if it was the mortician, it'd be fine. And then he'd just hear it. He'd just hear a squish, squish. <laughs> oh, hey, wait a minute. Who's shoving that pudding in that boot? <laughs> That's over quickly, though. That's all right. So uh, Carlo's like, yeah, I'm going to take the tape and uh, not watch you guys have sex because that would be very weird for me. And Sam's like, yeah, sure. I'm going to uh, fuck her and, and look at the picture. Yeah, and get a hump because that is not weird for me. He gets a hump, all yeah. right. <laughs> He's like, "Aha! I have an idea." Oh, he pulls it out real quick, he, you know, and he he nuts real quick and <laughs> jumps out. <laughs> like, hold on, all right, I'm done. Hey, I gotta go to that antique shop real quick. And what talk time to does the, the plane leave? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You got eight they... hours before the plane leaves. Yeah, we got eight hours. Don't worry about. Let's it. go it wander the enough. Italian the countryside. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go hitchhiking from somebody in the craziest truck ever, by the way. So uh, goes that. Yeah. Gets the address of the painter who painted the painting. And shows up at. And I have it listed as the abandoned house from Tomb of the Blind Dead. Yes. This fucking yes. place this Holy painter shit. lives. Okay. Yes. It, because it's just insanity. So he's like, hey, painter guy. And the guy drops him a ladder. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I walled up all the doors. I'm perfectly sane. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. I just walled up the doors because people bug me. And I have and cats. Like, what do you do with the delivery guy cats. who's bringing you food? Oh, well, wait a second. Yeah. Probably yeah, just there's... has to leave it on the ground. No cats. I... Oh, yeah, he makes the... his own food. The note that I have is that this artist has solved school shootings. That's true. Because he's literally got no doors. (laughs) Uh, So he climbs up the ladder because that's a smart thing to do. You know, get to a place where you can't escape safely unless the crazy guy gives you the ladder back. Uh, He's like, ah, look, man, I'm I'm the painter guy, but I'm done 
painting the crazy stuff like that you're asking me about. Now I only do mystical stuff. Yeah, he's into mysticism now. That's yeah, something a little too mystical a... to me. Is he says namaste no. a lot. He does say namaste a lot. But he, uh, he, uh, he's not a vegetarian, though, so he hasn't gone no. whole. He hasn't gone whole hog. He's, he's a vegetarian. Because he's just eating, he's eating pussy all day. <laughs> oh man! So he's like, "Yeah, I don't do those kinds of things anymore." He's like, "Hey, by, by the way, I have some wine, I have some food," and I like that the the Sam's like, oh, "I don't know about this," and he's like wiping the the fork off to get it all nice and clean. He's like, "Hey, uh, so that that painting over there you're doing, what what's going on with that?" The artist's like, "Oh, that's a cool painting," and then he just throws some of the food on the floor real quick. <laughs> he's like, "I'm not gonna eat this shit." And he says, uh, so uh, the one that I'm looking for, can you tell me about it? And he's like, yeah, sure. No problem. I know the whole history of it because I painted it. He goes, well, turns out there was this woman that was attacked by a maniac. And uh, that happened like 10 years ago. She lived. Oh, uh, and then could she... that have something to do with the plot of this movie? Mm. <laughs> no, because this woman's in an asylum. Yeah, mental institution. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they go look at the, uh, the the painting, right? And uh, as they're going to look at some of the other paintings, because he's like, oh, I'll buy another painting from you because I'm crazy. It's like, yeah, let's go look at one of them. And then the, the painter dude just like flips out. He's like, shit, go shut that window. It's like, oh, okay, hold on. I'm like, I wouldn't be playing along here. I'd be getting out of here. <laughs> this this uh, something oh, terrible is going to happen. You'll just eat coagulated blood, but this is where you draw the line. No, 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 no. I think the guy's going to try to kill me. I don't, I'm not worried about eating his cat. Well, that, you know that's meat, right? Yeah. So okay. cat, meat's, cat meat's not okay, but coagulated blood is. No, I said I would eat the cat. That's not a problem. And then coagulate its blood. Yeah. Make sausages out of it. <laughs> you should just try blood sausage no, is all I'm saying. I'm not going to do it. It's very good. And, and in uh, there's a lot of Thai soups that actually have uh, coagulated blood in them. Disgusting. And don't they have to warn you? There's so many bloodborne diseases. Like you can't possibly cook it long or hot enough to get rid of everything. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. You, well, you specifically can, Candace. Go ahead, Robbie. Yeah, well, I'll leave. I'll leave it. Sorry, I'll leave it to Robbie. Go yeah. ahead, buddy. Yeah, I mean, it's just another animal product, as far as that goes. It's just one we don't normally eat, but it, you know, you handle it like anything else. Um, as, and there's lots of uses for blood in cooking um, that we don't normally think about. Like you can use it to clarify things and make them clear and stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it's used. We just don't talk about it that much. Ew, yeah, I'm never going to eat again ever. <laughs> is it the only thing that you can use? You can't use any other substitutes. Got to be blood. No, there are lots of things you can use, but it's just it's, it's you can use it in some of the same places where you use egg whites. Okay, oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm just, just trying to think blood. of what's uh, blood <laughs> meringue pie. Yeah, I was trying like, oh shit, what uses egg whites? Uh, no devil's food cake for me. Not devil's food cake. Angel food cake. I'm never Angel eating that cake. again. <laughs> Well, I'm not, uh, not saying you're gonna do it, but it just has some of the similar properties. You can do it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like if you Robbie, go to Hardee's, you... it's gonna happen, right? <laughs> yeah. They speaking of high and mighty over there, you eat fast food. Come on, you know there's blood in there. Some teenager accidentally, like a scab falls off or something. You think they're gonna stop? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a and the skin gets rehydrated with the onions. I think it's a, a mental thing. Just the knowledge that it's blood is just enough to turn me completely off of it. Because you got that mental image. Like, you have the knowledge that there's blood in here. And so that's all I'm thinking about is the taste of blood. Mm. And, and you know, I'm not going to eat it. You know, you're full of blood, Candace. I don't drink it, do I? <laughs> Doesn't matter. You're still full of it, Candace. <laughs> oh, I'm full of it, all right. So I there. That. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we find out the reason he wants to shut the windows is because one of his kitties is going to escape. And he gets the cat up real quick, and he's like, oh, you know, these bastards, they keep trying to get out of their cage. And the guy's like, yeah, that's funny. Why do you keep them in a cage? 
It's like, well, I don't want him to move so much. I want him to get real fat. <laughs> it's like veal. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I have cats. I have to try to make them not be fat. Like, That's true. You they got just fat cats. Oh, my God. Damn. Maybe they might you have the food out all disorders. the time, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I do leave the food out all the time there because here's go. the problem. We've got one cat that will just not eat because it like forgets to because it's stupid Mm -hmm. and it's been like the point where i have to take it to the vet and they run a bunch of tests on it and i have to give it special food and shit cat (laughs) they give it a cat iq test (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's a a dumb dumb you had to you had to fuck the veterinarian to keep it going to that veterinarian (laughs) because it was right underneath the line (laughs) (laughs) his name is forrest (laughs) Cat is named Forrest. That's true. No, so we have to leave the food out for that dumb cat when it feels like eating to eat. Then the other cats take advantage of it and become uh, tremendous. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Catch 20. So uh, he's like, well, why do you want the cats to get fat? And he's like, oh, to eat them. And I'm like, we got a real Alf here, guys. <laughs> uh, Alfino. So Sam, Sam's like, I got to go puke. And he leaves. And uh, the guy's like, well, you don't want to buy my painting? Uh, how about uh, 50000 Uh How about uh, twenty five? And by the end of it, he just chucks the painting yeah, out the window yeah. at him. <laughs> That's how much it's really worth, right? Yeah, I guess so. An accurate Sam, portrayal of artist, I thought. Was... They... Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> Unconventional so, means of living. Alternative yeah. lifestyles is the yeah, term I like yeah. to use. Just walling yourself up in a house, eating cats, throwing paintings at people, getting into mysticism. Makes sense. So Sam calls up Julia. He's like, hey, you know how I left in a hurry because I had to do something real important. I was going to get a bunch of information on. It turns out that meant literally nothing. So I'm running late to get home. (laughs) Yeah, because he's like, it's late. There's a lot of traffic. I'm going to be late tonight getting home. It, how is he like, oh, there's no connection to this? You're fucking kidding me. There's mm-hmm. no connection. Another female was mysteriously attacked and uh-huh. lived. And right after that, yeah. this killer is loose. There's no way these two are connected, right? Plus, in any other movie, or if you're really this like guy in real life, your next thing is, where is she? the mental hospital? Exactly. Let me go talk to her. I've talked to right. fucking Make everyone sure she's else. she's still in the hospital. <laughs> Find out what's going on, yeah. Yeah, but no, instead it's uh, Deus Ex Carlo, uh, because he called up and he says that he found something very interesting, but he didn't say what it was. I'm going to ring the bell three times. I'm going to knock on the door five times. Don't be fucking when I open up that door. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Don't don't have someone inside of another person when I get there. Please. So... (laughs) So he's like, all right, well, he didn't tell you what it was that, that he discovered? No, he wants it to be a surprise. I'm like, okay, that's good. Always so a stupid then, move. <laughs> I know. This crucial so information, started. don't fucking share it with anybody. Well, you it wanted is to vital be there in that person. only one person know. <laughs> now, in what Scream, did... was that one of the rules of how you survive a horror movie? Have the piece of crucial information? Well, no, don't have the piece of crucial information, or as soon as you get that, tell everybody. I don't remember I that don't rule in Scream, so. but I'm I'm with you. It it, it, it is it a makes trope, sense. right? The guy, yeah. the yeah. girl, like, oh, I know who's the real killer is. I'm on my way over. Yeah, I'm, get killed. Just, it's like just call, I'm calling you to tell you I'm on my way over to tell you something important. It's like, or you could just fucking tell me right now. <laughs> you know, one of the two. Yeah, literally, <laughs> you could just say it. Say, hey, I already wrote a letter and mailed it to you with what the information is. I'm telling you the information right now. I guess I don't have to come over. So bases are covered twice. Save me gas money. Yep. Yeah. Uh, And besides, you're probably fucking right now. So I don't want to be there for that. Uh, Unless I get next. So the uh, killer, though, he he's aware of what's going on potentially because he he's like, all right, well, this is the perfect time to go over and uh, try to kill Julia. Right. So we get. Carlos headed over. Sam's headed over. The killer's headed over. Of course, the killer gets there first. And uh, you know how everybody in your house, you got like a hole that you, you kind of lean a crate against so people don't get in your house? 
<laughs> well, they have that scenario. Well, they're moving. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't fix the big hole in your house if you were moving. That's a good point, Tim. So are they taking the boxes out, Tim, through a hole in the side of the house? (laughs) (laughs) Look, they said the building's getting ready to be condemned, right? The landlord wants these fucking squatters out so he can sell it and flip it to a condo. Yeah, so put a hole in that fucking wall. No, Tim, so you're thinking that they did this intentionally to the house. (laughs) They're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm opening up another door so we can get shit out of here faster. We're like the opposite of the painter. So, uh, yeah, the, the killer just kind of moves the board out of the way and gets in to the uh, gets into the building, starts stalking up and makes their way up to the uh, to Fifth the door. Floor. Now, here's where they missed the part. This killer should have been fucking gassed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, then I'd suspect the informant. Well, right? <laughs> the one that was bitching about it. Yeah. Uh, I'd be bitching about having to go five, fucking five five flights of stairs. Yeah. So uh, then the killer starts knocking. She uh, she freaks out. She's like, His "Oh shit!" Are rocking. Don't come a knocking. She uh, goes over to to get the phone to call the cops, and right as she picks up the phone, killer cuts the line. Ah, shit! So then she goes to uh, enjoy the fact that she's got a working lamp. Yeah. And just then, the killer cuts the power. <laughs> She's like, "Shit, we're well, just ruining everything I had planned for the night." God damn it! Now and I'm out the water. It's another yeah. great Italian movie trope: the most useless fucking women on the face of the earth, the most useless, helpless, retarded women that you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, There's Candace, nothing wrong with her. In- exclusive to Italian horror movies at this time. Up yeah, until like women 10, are- 15 years ago, that's what you were seeing all the time. This, it's so, yeah. this one's so egregious. There, nothing happens to her. She does not get touched at all. But she's laying in the middle of the floor, completely helpless, just laying there, yeah. and like thrashing around like she's been stabbed or something. Like, the fuck are you I'm- doing, woman? God. That's true, but I think I'm with Tim, Candace. Uh, women are useless everywhere. So she does shove a big that. heavy wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how he heard it. That's how I heard it. I already got uh, in trouble last week with that show. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, the, the, she does shove a big heavy wardrobe at the door, but the killer's like cutting the hole out. But she does, and she tried to poke the killer's eye out. And I was like, oh, it's a giallo. Get yeah. it? Eye damage? Yeah. But but man, like, just what com- is this guy doing with the fucking knife? He's putting the smallest fucking hole through the door. What the fuck is he gonna do? No idea. Uh, stick his dick in there. <laughs> He's Still making a gory up. hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. So then, basically, uh, everybody in this scene is completely inept and useless, and angers well, she's me. E- she's particularly inept because at one point she runs in the bathroom and flings the window open. To be surprised that there are bars on the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. How long do you live here? And also, the other thing that I've written down, Robbie, is they live on the fucking fifth floor. Why do they right. need yeah, all this security on their fucking windows? Well, plus, they're on the fifth floor. She's going to, like, what, open the window and jump out? Yeah. yeah. It's not high Wee! This is way better than being stabbed. Thunk. I'm going to go out on yeah. my terms. But then, uh, no, Sam shows up and scares the killer away. Yeah. And we cut to the next day, and Carlo shows up. And he says, hey, that, that sound that was in the recording. I have written down, they missed the plane again. <laughs> they missed the what? They the missed plane? the plane. Yeah, the plane yeah, was leaving that night. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. This guy, I mean... If they're not refunding it, he's at least he's getting a lot of flyer miles, yeah. right? This woman, Eddie, I don't think I think at this time I don't think you were paying for these fucking tickets up front. I think he was just literally reserving a seat oh. and then was going to buy those <laughs> tickets, right? Oh man, that airline's pissed at him, man. He calls up there like, you know what? Fuck you. You're, you're Italian now. You're not American anymore. Yeah, back then you could use a fake name to get on the airplane. So that's much true. simpler times. <laughs> much easier uh. to get away with crime. Uh, Those were the um, days. What? I said those were the days. <laughs> what, 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 what's going on, Robbie? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> okay. So yeah, then the uh, next day, Carlo shows up and he's like, "Hey, that sound, guys. I know what made it." <laughs> I'm like, "How?" 
<laughs> nope, nothing. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, it's, it's, this is a miracle. <laughs> I, it's literally a mirror it's deus ex carlo like i said he goes oh it's actually the sound and this is like some nerd ass candace shit that he comes in with <laughs> oh well, it's actually from this bird that's called the hornitus navalis it's a no, no, made-up no, bird see here's the thing is this would be something that if in the smallest fucking possible percentage of probabilities this guy knows what the sound is he would know it right away you can't come back two days or three days fucking later going, did he listen to a bunch of fucking bird sounds? <laughs> yeah, he went down. <laughs> they deputized him and he went down to the computer with all the sounds in the world, Tim. And he put bird calls in there. I have written down. Bird call, question mark, question mark. How the fuck would he know? <laughs> yeah. And oh, he's like, this, uh, this is the part that kills me where I was nerding out. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> because he said, oh, it's a very rare bird that's only found in northern Siberia, and mm-hmm. its feathers are like crystals. They're like glass. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. It lives in northern Siberia, mm-hmm. where it needs to stay warm, but its yeah. feathers are like glass with no fluffing or, or you know, any kind of, mm. like, undercoat. If you think Siberia is cold, try north Siberia. <laughs> It's like, and this is, I'm supposed to believe this? And then when they show the fucking bird, I was like, what are you talking about? That is a yeah. gray-crowned crane. They're from Africa. Mm. So I have that it's, in, in the subtitles I saw, it said it was from the Caucasus Mountains. And still yeah, Russia. Yeah, that's what still I said. Russia. Still Russia. Caucus, yep, yeah. yep. But, and it didn't say that the, the, the feathers were fine like glass or like crystal. It just said that they were silver. And resembled crystal. Had nothing to do with its like plumage, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's still, no way Carlo would have known this. This is insanity. <laughs> he goes, oh, and but and by the way, there's only one of them that's lived in captivity in Italy, and it's at the good old fashioned zoo. And it's I'm like, like hey, I knew it. And didn't you write a book about how to preserve rare birds? Yeah, <laughs> that wouldn't have like you know jogged a memory or something it's not like you can just write a book in a week no i think he meant preserve like jarring them you know canning (laughs) um, (laughs) making them into jerky (laughs) it wasn't a bestseller let me tell you (laughs) like wait you're not supposed to kill the rare ones god damn it they're smoked now they're not rare (laughs) (laughs) And, and i was like uh Oh, well, I knew it from the beginning. It's the fucking zookeeper. I predicted this from the first fucking killing. <laughs> no. Uh, it's my no, I, honest, Honestly, I'm like, okay, so the killer's Carlo, because he's the only person in the world who knows what this fucking bird sounds like. Yep, that's right. what I was thinking, too. Yeah. <laughs> and he just ratted himself out. No, so then they, they're like, all right, well, we got to clearly go on a field trip to the zoo, right? <laughs> so they head to the zoo. And the, the zookeeper is like, hey, we keep that bird all the way in the back because it's an asshole. It, all the other animals fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fucking crystal plumage and shit. It thinks it's all bad. Uh, no, it's because it's so delicate. They have to keep it away from all the other animals. What? <laughs> well, because the other animals like throw shit at it. Like what's going uh, on? Okay. Look, look, I'm going to defer to the Italian zoo in the 70s and just trust they really know what they're doing and they're really taking care of the animals. Very, very oh, well. yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't just <laughs> open all the cages and let somebody film a horror movie. Nope. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Maybe the Italian zoo operates like the Italian police. and it's like, <laughs> we, <laughs> oh, <laughs> You think whoever, you're buying a ticket, but you just became an employee. Yeah, now you're cleaning the <laughs> elephant cages today. Or whatever. <laughs> oh, and this makes Candace's point. So the zookeeper probably was just a dude that was visiting one day. And they're like, hey, do you know what bird that is? And he's like, I don't fucking know. (laughs) Probably some Hornetus Navalis. Just call it crystal plumage. It sounds good. Yeah, it's from uh, northern Siberia. (laughs) Oh, and they call it the crystal wing because its it's feathers are made of glass. They're like, you're hired, sir. (laughs) You come up with good names. I like that. Yeah. So they go back to where that that bird is, and yeah, it's a low rent, not crystal looking bird for damn sure. Yep, yeah, that bird looks stressed. African He's been plucking crane. his feathers. They they look up back behind the bird though, and they see <gasps> apartments. So it could only be one person. <laughs> I'm like, I don't what? 
He's like, oh no, Wasn't remember this the an guy? apartment that we saw before in the movie, though? Yeah, it, it is. is. Not from, yeah, but not from this angle. We saw yes, it inside of the apartment. Because no, what? the red ivory on the building. Oh, right. Uh, you know what? It's because the Italian buildings all look the same to me. That's the thing. Uh, so they're like, no, it's the the dude at the museum. He's the guy, the guy I suspected from the beginning because he's left handed. Mm-hmm. So we we got to go bust in on there and figure out what's going on. So they run up the state. The cops come and everybody because they all went to the zoo because they're like everybody no warrant. Right. Everybody showed up to the day when you're going to the zoo. If you know, no, this is how the cops are able to get into that guy's apartment without a warrant because they watch two people break into the killer's apartment. Now the cops oh, can yeah. legally follow them in. <laughs> That's true. <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> they were breaking and entering. Now the cops can go in. Yeah. Hey, we're investigating a breaking and entering. I mean, <laughs> hey, you're the killer. <laughs> Open and shut case, Mr. Yobo. Uh, you know what? I want to see this show. I want to see this, this Italian police department operate that we've made up in our own fiction here because it's quite entertaining. So they get in there and uh, the dude's got a knife out and he's going to kill Monica. And they're like, oh, don't kill her. And he's like, what? No, I'm uh, shit. And he stabs a cop. I'm like, that's no, you're doing a bad thing. So then. By the way, there's a big open window right yeah, behind him. Sure, that's not going to come into play. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they, somebody might want to close that window because I think he might fall out of it. And lo and behold, they wrestle him back to the window where he begins to fall out of it. <laughs> then you've got a, the dudes are like holding his hand to like keep him up from falling like the good son. Yeah. I was thinking die hard. Uh, die hard. Yeah. Another good one. <laughs> And uh, he's like, no. He's like, yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. the killer. I did it. I confess. And then the, 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 then he falls. Uh, plop. Hits the pavement. Take care of my wife. Take care of my wife. But then they, they, he's not dead down there, though, because they hook him up to an IV. And I'm like, what? They're keep, How are they keeping him al- alive? What? Is he bleeding to death? They're just giving him blood that's just bleeding immediately out of him? Like, what's... Maybe uh-huh. they're collecting the blood. Oh, okay. So he's like an <laughs> for, organ donor. For making sausages. They're, like, they're going to make sausages later. Italian yeah, sausage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's how you get the spicy Italian sausage. You got to have that panic in there. The that's adrenaline. spicy blood. Yeah. That's a spicy meatball. Uh, so he's like, yeah, I confess I did it. I was the, the killer the whole time. Take care of my wife. And then they're recording and they're like, well, we got a confession. So the movie is over. And then the credits roll. But that's not what happens. Because I was but like, that doesn't. Not... Get, it's got to get back to America. I was like, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. Oh, isn't there some people missing from this scene? Yeah. So Sam's like, all right, well, I'm glad that I solved the case because I'm a cop. Now I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go fuck his wife now that now that he's dead. Mm-hmm. So where, where's she? Where's Monica? At? Yeah, that's how some They're people express like... grief. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you know, she could use a shoulder to, to cry on. So like, I'm going to go fuck her. Where is she? So he's asking people, hey, where'd Monica go? And they're like, ah, she went that way, dude. And I'm like, wow, everybody pays attention to everybody walking by and where they're going. And, and, <laughs> and, they will and, tell yeah, and he also, he every time he goes, he mimes, because he's Italian. He mimes the same thing. Long brown hair, gray coat. And he's doing the same the hand motions to everybody. Blonde hair. Oh, blonde hair, sorry. Tim, you messed up her hair color, man. That's I'm surprised. I don't like blondes, so I usually will make a woman oh. a brunette, redhead, you got, black hair. You got, you got blonde Blind. blindness. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easy because you can't see their fi- fucking faces. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, he follows by, uh, to, to get to her and uh, gets to an apartment building. Goes up to the apartment building and uh, opens the door and the lights are out. So I was like, huh, this is suspicious. I'm like, why are you in somebody's apartment that's not yours? You shouldn't be here. <laughs> so he's flipping on the light. Oh, it doesn't bitch. work. That's true. He is a cop. I forgot. I, You're right. Sorry. So he's uh, trying to turn the lights on and it's not working. And then um, 
we see that, that, and now it's nighttime, by the way, day turned to night. He's been following her this fucking long. Yeah. <laughs> so, which is great. But then it's also not nighttime because of what happens here, <laughs> right? With the curtain. So then he, he goes in, he's like, oh, shit, I can't do it. And then we see Julia just on the ground tied up. Hog tied. Stabbed. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But he doesn't then see he, her. No. So then remember how I said it turned nighttime? Well, he pulls this curtain and then we then now it's lit up because it's daytime, really. And then he does the, one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in a movie. He just fucking mm-hmm. does a Spider-Man and just drops down to the floor, right? Yeah. Just Why? falls to the floor. He's, he's a klutz. No, this isn't a fall down. This is this is like somebody's like taking shots and him or swinging something at his head no, and he I drops know. all the way down. I know, I know. I don't know why he does it, but he does it. Uh, and he sees the uh, the painting on the wall, so we know this is where the killer is, right? Because they bought the painting. Then he sees Carlo sitting in a chair, holding a knife, and he's like, "Oh shit, Carlo, you were the killer." And he pats him. He does the thing where you pat the killer on the back to congratulate him. Good job. And then Carlo falls forward with a big knife in his back. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Carlo's not the killer because he's dead. And then we hear laughter. And Candace, this had to have just shocked the hell out of you. Oh, yeah. Certainly did. Who comes out? Oh, this had. comes out from the shadows, Candace? It was uh, Monica or whatever the fuck her name is. It was Monica all along, Robbie. <laughs> and I thought, I thought, oh, because she like lets out that like long thing of red hair, and I was like, I bet Tim's like, here we go. <laughs> I forgive yeah. her. I do the same yeah. thing. If that was my wife. Yeah. So he's like, uh, what the fuck? And he's like, oh, wait a minute. Now I remember. Well, when I was watching you get stabbed, I was actually watching you try to stab your husband. <laughs> okay, now I have two questions. Uh, okay. Do we really see that happening? Because we see like three or four times he's replaying the scenes over his head. And I, I, didn't, I am not going to lie and say I watched this movie two times or reround it just to find out. But I couldn't tell if like, oh, and the, if you watch like the first couple of flashbacks or when it's happening in the movie that you can really see what's supposed to be going on at the end of this movie, that she's trying to stab her husband. And then my second question is, why the fuck is her husband dressed up like that? No, the, uh, yeah, well, that's a good point. But, you know, what they, when they're showing the scenes, when he's he's distinguished, (laughs) the, when they show the scenes of him, you know, running through it over and over again in his mind, they clearly show that it's the husband. Like, it's not really a mystery. But, okay, so they're cheating. Yeah, they are. But I knew it was the woman because, A, I have seen enough Giallo and they follow enough tropes that I'm like, yeah, I fucking know what's happening here. I already know that this this is, you know, she gets triggered by this painting. And so she goes on a spree because either she knew the person who got killed and it, like, wound, you know, mentally wounded her or she was the person who got attacked. Like, I, I already figured all this shit out already because it's it's a trope. Like, there's nothing original in this movie. Wow, Candace. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just really stick it to the, to the movie then. Wow. Sorry, so, yeah, Monica. Monica. Yeah. Candace I'm, I am hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah she she flees the scene and he's like oh good uh julia you're probably okay on the floor hogtied right because yep. i'm gonna go chase after <laughs> oh they did try to give you the red herring with the girlfriend because a she's british and yeah. they said that there yeah. was like textiles from england and also she's left-handed I was like paying oh, attention, yeah. and she like uh, when she's holding stuff up, she's using her left hand, and she tries right, zippering right. the uh, lo- the the uh, suitcase with her left hand. And when she's jacking him off when they're having sex in front of Carlo, and he's like, "Wait, up there. <laughs> you're left handed." <laughs> Does that feel Wait, different? You're left handed. <laughs> when so, when it was, when they use their left hand, yeah, yeah, it's called the stranger. No, if you, you use when... your left hand, it's called the stranger. And don't no, you have to you... sit on that one? Yeah, it's called the. It, it's called the spicy southpaw. Yeah, no, it's a strange <laughs> when you pretend your wife is a different chick that looks exactly like her but is left-handed. It's a stranger. Ah. 
I'm going to tell my wife tonight you're going to write with the other hand. Uh-huh. But, well, they also put a red herring with the girlfriend because when she sees the police officer, she's like real aggressive and he's like, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Right. She's yes, like, no, that's you true. Haven't. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And I was like, that's too uh, obvious. Yeah. I'm thinking it's a woman and I'm thinking there's only other one, uh, one other woman in this movie. Yeah, and it's got to be a Yeah, woman. but they could have been really stupid and just like made it where whoever that girl in the painting was, this is her sister, so that we've never seen before. Oh, yeah. yeah you mean like yeah. <laughs> fucking strip nude for your killer? Hey, they're sisters and they do lesbian stuff together. Don't talk of anything bad about that movie. Okay, sorry, Tim. So, so uh, then he chases her back to the museum uh, where it all began. Which I think this and... building's all connected. It's like the fucking saw building, yeah. right? I think so, yeah. So they're going to tear down the museum, too, that means. And the police department. Fuck. Well, they're expanding the museum. Now, earlier, we saw that that, that Monica and her husband were hanging up a new exhibit in the museum. And that is you have a really small piece of rope with um, (laughs) spikes (laughs) (laughs) that are sticking out of a wall that looks like some shit that it looks like something Jigsaw would come up with. I think that that's fair. Yeah. So uh, he, he runs in. Sam runs in after uh, old Monica to get her into the museum. And she, uh, Phantom of the Opera's his ass with this thing. Because he just cuts the rope and she's like, ha, ha, ha. And it falls down on top of him. Yeah, I'm so bored by this point. Because that was like the longest cat and mouse scene of him like stumbling through dark corridors. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. That's why I kind of breezed past it. Uh, so then like, she, she's. You didn't like Candace that the writer is crushed by the art. No. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't find that poetic. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Because he's not, you know, an artist. He's a writer. That's right. completely different mediums. That's that's Ooh. true. You're right. Okay. Writing isn't artistic. That's a very good point. It's a different form of it's, art. It's, it's, it's but it's artistic. Yeah. yeah. If he now, if he was crushed by an art exhibit that was a giant book, <laughs> then <laughs> I would have got pen. it. <laughs> <laughs> just like a big pen falls on him. Boom. It's a gigantic fountain pen. She just opens it up, and he drowns in the ink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See that? Then, then Candace would have liked the movie. Uh, so now, then she goes down there, and she's like, "Aha! You're you're gonna die like all of them died." And she starts pointing the knife at his face. And then she jumps up on top of the thing, the art piece, which I thought was rude. Uh, and then she 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 just about to to stab him in his face. Donkey punch. Yeah, yeah. She gets uh, uh, no, like she blackjacked gets, in the back of no, her head. No, she gets judo chopped. You can clearly see the the fist making like the judo chop thing. Oh. And I was like, that is the most effective way to subdue your enemy is to judo chop them on the back of the neck. Yeah, I saw it in Austin Powers. Yeah, it's science. I saw it in every Not single Bond movie. Move, but go ahead. See, no, if, we, Tim, see if that works. No, Tim, Tim would whip out hit, his... Yeah, he would have uh, hit them in the back of the head with his dick. And that's yeah. how he would And then finger in her ass. <laughs> yeah. She's not going to be stabbing anybody if that if that happens. Trust me. <laughs> and, he, and he's like, you going to calm down now? <laughs> yeah. I'm checking your oil. Calm down. <laughs> you know. And, nah, so... Uh, then it's the cops, and then he's all like, oh, cops, thank God you're here. And the cop says, yeah, Julia told me you were here. And I'm like, how? Yep. <laughs> how, how did you know where Julia was? Mm-hmm. How she did was she know where they were? How did, yeah, and how did she know where they were? Exactly, Tim. So uh, then the they, they get him. The cops have been following him the whole time. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Well, no, hold on. Maybe she knows who the killer is, right? Could be, yeah. Well, the killer uh, and, kidnaps her, takes her to the fucking apartment, right, and has it tied right. up and everything, right? That's true. That's true. And the cops did hire Julia to tail Monica because Monica had a parking ticket. So that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> so then the, the cops take uh, Sam out and, and you know get him all saved and stuff. And then they're like, all right, guys, so here we're going to tell you the story of the movie now. See, it turns out that Monica was insane. Uh, And her husband, he loved her so much that he became her accomplice. And now, Candace, this is the part you probably didn't pick up on. You see, it turns out that Monica was the girl in the painting. No shit. 
Mind blown. <laughs> and when she saw that painting at the uh, antique store, she went fucking cuckoo pants and started enacting the trauma that, that uh, happened to her, but with her as the aggressor. Yeah, the mm-hmm. victim she becomes the switch. victimizer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so Sam and Julia, they dip out. They're like, yeah, uh, we're out of here. Uh, Italy, we're, we're, we're done. We have to take 17 yeah. planes to get to America. <laughs> take yeah, seventeen. Plus, planes we're going to take uh, seventeen shots of people smiling at each other, and the planes taking off. And oh uh, god, I hated it. Well, hated yeah, it. that plane like, editing scene was that was like, eh, come on, you don't have to end the movie. I thought it was weird that they played the "Coming to America" song at the end of it. That was weird, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> And there you go, folks. That is Candace's favorite giallo. <laughs> yeah. The bird with the crystal plumage. Um, uh, all Candace, the, all the you... good squishy feelings I had about giallo killed now. It's I dead. Know, I'm sorry. Gone. It's over that. with. Dead I was too. like, oh, I remember why I hate giallo. <laughs> <laughs> My work now is done. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie, by the way. <laughs> I knew if anybody was going to help me torture Candace, it would be you. Um, we thought it was going to be Wick. We thought it was going to be New York Ripper. Oh, I know. I know. I know. We we, we did think New York Ripper wasn't going to be your cup of tea, but you you, you loved it. Uh, to be fair, though, we the one we're doing next weekend with uh, Faustus isn't a Jallo. So well, that's good. Oh, what is it, by the way? Can we? Are we going to say Lisa, that? Or? Yeah, sure. It's uh, Lisa and the Devil. Oh, I know that movie. That sounds okay. like a porn movie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear my That's dog the devil yelling? And it Miss was very Jones. cute. So, no, we didn't. Damn it! Uh, so, Candace, what do you think of the movie? Would you suggest people watch it? Or? I mean, if you like Giallo, then you've probably already seen this movie, and if you haven't, then you should. If that's your thing. But if you're like me, that's very, and you don't like Giallo, very, don't watch this movie because it's not going to change your mind. <laughs> that's very democratic of you, or diplomatic. Yeah, I'm, tra- I'm trying to I even guess. my tone when I talk about other people's opinions. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> get some feedback. Trying so hard. Uh, what about you, Tim, buddy? What do you say about uh, this movie? I kind of agree with Candace. If you're a fan of these types of movies, you've definitely already seen this movie. It's like you know, if you like fucking Hitchcock, you've seen Psycho. Nobody's going to be like, oh, I've never seen this movie before if I, if you already like this whole genre of films. But uh, not enough tits for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Last week, tits. movie spoiled me. Yeah. Uh, the, see, this is the problem, is that we've set you up, Tim, for failure. <laughs> You've seen so many tits in the past few weeks. I think we have to level set. We need no tits for you for another month. Oh, this is like uh, like a rinsing of the mouth out before I have a dessert or something? Yeah, exactly. It's a palate cleanser, mm. Tim. Uh Robbie, my friend, what, what do you suggest people uh, uh, think they should take a take a stab at it? Maybe they'll appreciate it where Candace and Tim didn't. I think if you if it's uh, kind of the flip side of what they said, if you like Jalo movies, this is one you should see because um, it, it kind of informs uh, what they are. I think. Yeah, absolutely. I would say I think you definitely should watch it. It's a uh, a masterful whodunit. It's a thrill a minute. Yeah. Um, the police <laughs> are can never figure out who did it. Outstanding <laughs> in this movie. No, I think it's fun to like try to dissect how it works mechanically. <laughs> yeah. Because it just makes no fucking sense from scene to scene. But it is fun to watch. I would say. Um, so, Robbie, thank you so much for bringing this to the show. Is there anything on the internet you want our listeners to pay attention to? Oh, uh, not, uh, nothing I can think of right now as far as on the internet. I, I'll say that I'm looking forward to Daniel coming back and the uh, mustachioed podcast here returning. Yes, he is. Yeah. It's yeah. true. The, re- the rumors are true. Yeah. The return of the stash. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what about you, Tim? Anything you want people uh, to pay attention to? Yeah, I I think, uh, you, know, you know me, I'm the hardest working man in podcasts without getting paid. So I have something mm-hmm. coming out somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah. Probably absolutely. on the grind bin. There's uh, probably some oh, minis yeah. backed the up. Grind. Tim, we have a grind bin coming out that we were on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, dude, the, see this, Eddie, you spoiled me. We do the fucking show usually on Sunday. Tuesday, the fucking show is out. Mm-hmm. I do a grind bin thing, and it's like, 
dude, that was like 12 pounds ago. 12 pounds ago. <laughs> Tim's been, uh, Tim's trying to put on 200 pounds for a role in a movie. So uh, I'm doing it for a role on a podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's method. You're a method podcaster. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, awesome. So uh, what about you, Candace? Um, I'm still waiting to hear back from Esoteric Cinema about what I'm going to be watching. So I don't know. Uh-oh. Right. Other than that, I'm not really doing anything. Yep. So as always, Mustachio Podcast, you know, the grind bin, you know, the family, make sure you're paying attention to them, listening to them. Uh, I think I've got something coming out with them in uh, uh, about a year. Uh, yeah. You just movie... recorded last night, right? Or the, yeah. The movie night, Thursday. Night. Yeah. Yep. The movie Rage. Uh, that's a fun one. Uh, other than that, you know, you can always, you know, listen to more of what we're doing by going to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash bloody bits, where for as little as $10 a month, you can get access to our bonus episodes and the blood bank where we have things like Shasta McNasty on. But you right, can also Tim? join for less than $10 a month. You could, you could, you could join for $5 a month if you suck. Um, <laughs> and, or you could join for more. Some people pay more and, and we, suck uh, less. we approve. We appreciate that. And suck harder. Um, Suck harder, yeah. yeah. Uh, they swirl the tongue. Uh, other <laughs> they tease than the tip. that, I'm trying to think. Of, no, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, and if you if you can, leave us a five star review on your podcasting application of your choice. It really does help uh, for people to pay more attention to us. We've been in the top 100 recently on uh, iTunes in America, so Look that's something crazy. Oh. Yeah, Who crazy, crazy. I never would have thought, but you know what I do think? I think that this is how we end it. Goodbye.